find your passion in life how to get unstuck, find your purpose, and start living life as an exclamation point. By Reap Me Shores. Best-selling author of Living Life as an Exclamation Point. Acknowledgements. I thank Michelle Larson for her bright, shiny, happy talents that contributed to these pages. I thank her for her support and caring on this project, even in the middle of raising her tween. I thank my fellow sassy mastermind partner, Leanne Mod, for putting up with my meltdowns. She helps me pull back the pretty and get to the heart of what's important. And I know it's a two-way street because she always says during her own meltdowns, you get me. Yes, I do. I thank Amy Harris for being the unknowing guinea pig in so many of my theories. She listens, learns, and applies. And then uses these strategies in her own life. I love hearing how they've worked when we occasionally share lemon ricotta pancakes at Sunday brunch and then promptly tell each other, no, you don't have old lady but. Praise for find your passion in life. Remy, you hit the nail on the head. I would recommend everyone looking to live their life to the fullest should read this book. Live today, as tomorrow is promised to no one. Sandra Lee Williams, business success coach wealthy woman living internationally, LLC HTTP colon slash slash www.wealthywomanlivinginternationally.com slash. Encore, Remy, Encore. Your second book is even deeper and richer in wisdom with more heart more inspiration and more energy. This book provides useful techniques and effective tools that will support everyone to have more passion in their life. Julianne's offer core energy coach and creator of the fulfillment factor formula http colon slash slash slash. I highly recommend find your passion in life. Remy brings you definitions, exercises and examples from a place of just wondering to a place of discovery and exclamation showing the reader with ease that there is always time to discover your life purpose and live a great life. Esther Coronel de Ibercal the Clarity Mentor Life Changing Coach www.clarityconfidenceinsolfestimno.com Helping and Guiding Healing Arts Practitioners, Educators Independent practice professionals become aware of their life purpose and learn how to build a business online. Find Your Passion in Life is filled with terrific stories, thought-provoking insights and powerful exercises. It's one of those books that keeps you fully engaged from beginning to end. Thank you Remy for showing us how to find our true purpose and giving us the confidence to make it happen. Joyce Lehman Blackburn Chief Dot Connector at Mind by Design HTTP colon slash slash www.joycelayman.com slash. I have worked with individuals and groups on their vision, values and purpose for over 20 years and haven't seen anything as powerful as Remy's method for helping people get to the heart of their passion. Easy to pick up and devour, the book is brimming with powerful insights and practical tips. One of my favorites, creating your inner board of directors. Brilliant. This book will become an important part of my work from now on. Deborah Pruitt, Ph.D. Speaker. Consultant. Author. HTTP colon slash slash www.groupalchemy.net forthcoming book, Group Alchemy, The Six Elements of Highly Successful Collaboration. This work hits the bull's eye with an exclamation point. Your profoundly simple step-by-step -step guide to finding happiness comes at the perfect time. We are ready, now more than ever, to live truthfully and with purpose, and Remy makes it possible. The world is waiting for each of us to step up and answer our calling by asking the age-old questions at the core of every heart. Find Your Purpose in Life is a must read and I will absolutely recommend it to all my clients. Valerie Sorrentino Live Life with Ease, http colon slash slash www.lifeenergycoach.com slash. It's my belief that, clarity is divinity, and so when I read Remy Shaw's latest work I was really inspired. 
not only by her clarity in expressing some powerful principles that really do work to help people get unstuck, but also by her immediately useful suggestions and practices for me as the reader to be empowered in coming to my own clarity in so many areas where I personally have found myself stuck. I especially loved her sections on finding energy and discovering values. When we are masters of our own energy and clear on what it is we value we automatically start living our purpose with a big exclamation point. Thanks, Remy, for your great work in the world. Please keep it coming, love. Amethyst Wildfire, the speaker's shaman and empress of empowerment multidimensional mentoring, magic, medicine and mastery navigational guide for the magnetic messengers. HTTP colon slash slash empoweredmessenger.com slash. Are you ready to start living life as an exclamation point exclamation? Then welcome to your guidebook filled with great insight, wisdom and compassion. Delve in, take action, and let Remy hold your hand as she walks you through how to move forward to create a life filled with passion and purpose. Life is a blessing, each minute matters. You matter and you deserve a meaningful life that is full of exclamation points. Don't waste another minute, continue reading and create the life of your dreams. Janice Stefanis The Breakthrough Strategist Customer First Strategies, LLC HTTP colon slash slash www.customerfirststrategies.com slash. Introduction Who am I? Why am I here? What does life mean? What is the purpose of life? These are some of the big questions in life. The ones philosophers and religious leaders and all kinds of seekers spend their lives fasting and praying and searching the globe trying to answer. In a way, I guess I'm one of those people. But I see those big questions as something else, they're really asking something deeper. Am I living life full out? Do I have heart throbbing, mind blowing? Life altering love in my life? Do I matter? Am I making a difference? Answer these questions, and you'll know exactly who you are and why you're here. Many of us struggle, day to day, filling time and getting by while we dream and wish for something irresistible. We feel guilty when we indulge in our passions because we worry about how it conflicts with our responsibilities. We think that somehow, living up to others' expectations, Fulfilling others' needs, and following the standard path is what we need to be doing. The reality is, it is our passions that help us find our purpose in life. That's our responsibility. And when we begin to fulfill our purpose, the universe responds with prosperity and abundance. But we can't just indulge in our passions without direction, either. We need guidance, and that guidance is our values. That's what this book is all about, identifying our passions and values so we can live a purpose-infused life. When we know our values and how to find our passion in life, and live according to those values and passions, we actually turn those question marks into exclamation points. That's why my national best-selling book is called, Living Life as an Exclamation Point www.livinglafizanexclamationpunt.com Defining values and passions Passions are what we want, while values are who we are and what we stand for. But how do we determine exactly what our values and passions are in the first place? This is an exciting, almost addictive topic. To start, let's define values. Basically, values describe what's important to an individual. Our values are our compass. They can be ethical or moral values, political or religious values, social values, or even one of my personal favorites, aesthetic values. Where values are who we are, passions are what we want, which makes them kind of like values on steroids. They're the things that make us jump out of bed in the morning and keep us up way longer than we should be at night. And they also offer a big, big clue as to what makes me me, and you you. That doesn't necessarily mean we think about our passions all that often. Some people think that passions are indulgent and just go through their day doing what they think they're supposed to in a robotic, going through the motions approach to life. 
others, especially people who are feeling lost, or depressed, or down, can lose touch with their passions, sometimes without even realizing it. But without passions, we're missing a big part of ourselves. When we lose our passions, we lose touch with our soul, which defines who we are. Our life force just goes away. But what's even more important than passions? It's our life purpose. I believe we all have passions in our life, but more than that we have a purpose for being here. We weren't put on this earth to struggle, or even just survive. We were given one unique strength, and that uniqueness is our purpose. Do you know what your purpose is? Finding out why we are here and what we are supposed to do with our life isn't about the finding part. It's about creating our life. When we ask ourselves, what is my purpose? We're asking, who do I want to be and how can I make a difference? It's the secret source of life. So if you feel like something's missing in life, but you can't put your finger on it. If you're looking to move beyond basic survival and comfort and into making a difference while you're here on this earth, then join our community at http colon slash slash remicourse.com slash blog slash where you can begin to uncover your own unique message to the world, your own natural energy, your top passions, and find the purpose-infused life that you're meant to live. What is your gift? We're all put here specifically and uniquely to do something that we were made for. As we all probably know by now, my absolute passion is helping you find yours, and then really helping those who are experts in making a difference in this world, helping us all to get our message out. That's what we're doing here in this book, we're looking for your oh 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 oh. Identifying our gifts takes a little bit of work, but don't worry. We just have to be honest with ourselves about who we are, what we love and what we believe is possible in our lives. I want to take a look at something that I know can just catapult us in getting our passions and purpose out into the world and rock our pocketbook with affluence. I've had money, and I've not had money, and I tell you. Having it is better. I want to set us up to create our own personalized path to wealth. Do what you love we find happiness in direct proportion to doing what we love. If we aren't doing what we love, don't we die a little each day? I found this to be true when I transitioned out of my real estate career. I was a top producing agent for quite some time, with awards and statues, and all kinds of celebrity. I held the customer service award year after year after year. You'd think it was my calling, right? After all, I was successful by all modern standards of the term. I had money, awards, prestige even a certain level of fame. But real estate was a love-hate relationship for me. I hated it and I loved it, all at the same time. And there's something I learned about relationships a long time ago. They aren't 50 slash 50. They're 100 slash 100. So if I 50% loved it, and 50% hated it, the part of me that loved it got eaten up 100%. That's what was making me die a little each day. Makes sense? It's true in love and work relationships, too. If our partner is only the 50%, doesn't that just eat up all our energy as we try to compensate for the 50% they aren't there? Insight hash 1, begin to look at those things that are 50 slash 50 in life. And see if they can be improved to 100%. One of the first steps in finding our passions and purpose in life, and finding our own personalized path to affluence, is learning to listen to the truth of who we are, which means finding that purpose that is 100% you. This is the transformation I try to provide with every program, that you find out who you are and what you stand for. And it takes you being honest with you. Challenge what's possible when I say that we can increase our relationships to 100% and our income tenfold, yes, tenfold, it is possible, believe me. Because that's very real when we're living the life we're meant to live. I want us to begin to connect with that, right now, today. And challenge what's possible. That's both a tip and a little inspiration. Insight hash 2, 
To be truly successful, challenge what's possible. We know we have a purpose for being here, and maybe we even have more than one mission to complete in our lifetime. But for so many people, they don't know what their purpose is, and this breaks my heart. With limitless possibilities in front of us, sometimes we need help bringing clarity to our vision, and our vision to reality. This is the heart of my program. So let's see if we can get a grasp on what those possibilities are. What's possible? Let me ask this question, what's possible once we know our passions and our purpose? What are the possibilities? If anything is possible, then what does that leave out? In one statement, it's possible for us to create a vision, bring that vision to reality, and live the life we're meant to live. It's also about our soul's journey, and knowing what that is. It's about living our legacy, and creating stunning new possibilities. We need to find our inner horsepower, our natural energy, our inner genius. And we need to learn how to ask the right questions, to get the right answers. We need to see the difference between illusions, and the truth that's underneath an illusion. These are all the aspects of creating a vision, and bringing that vision to reality. That's why I'm here. That's my purpose for you. A blessing in disguise I remember a recent client I had, who had been married for over 20 years and her husband just up and left. Can you imagine? But this is really a very common story that I hear. She had always been a stay-at-home mum and never had to support herself out in the world. She had no clue what she was going to do, and she was in a panic. We sat down and discussed her passions in life. We went a little deeper to find her purpose. And she discovered that she was really meant to help people with transitions, transitioning in or out of marriage, transitioning through empty nest syndrome, transitioning and adjusting into a new career. Her true calling was helping people adjust through a transition. It was all over her language, and she couldn't even see it. Suddenly this client realized that the hardship she was going through, a divorce after 20 years, was there for a reason. There was a usefulness to it. With it came the experience and knowledge to help her to help others. This is the kind of genius that's living inside all of us. Inside hash 3, part of our responsibility is to teach others what we learn and to help them grow. It's irresponsible not to. This increases our energy, and theirs, beyond measure, and is also the highest and best use of our journey, to make a difference for others. Does this sound like a really deep discussion? Does it sound difficult? Do you wonder if you can do this, too? Don't worry. The steps laid out in this book will get you started on your own path. I'm here to guide you through each step. And I'll bet you have a close friend who can help you, too. Insight Hash 4, it helps to have a buddy when we're identifying our passions. They can help spot the languaging patterns that we can't hear in our own head. Our life experiences help to prepare us for the purposes we are to serve in life, but we can't always see them for ourselves. This is where a buddy comes in. Other people in our lives often see the wonderful things that we are capable of, even when we don't. Especially when we don't. When we take the time to talk about our lives with others, we can often find that purpose deep within. Our inner board of directors I've also had people sit with me and develop their own inner board of directors, and then slide right out of their problems in an instant. Suddenly the answers appeared right before them simply because they learned how to take on the perspective of a particular board member and come up with the right question to get the right answer. It's kind of magical. We'll be doing my wickedly popular exercise on how to create our own inner board of directors a little later. What if your purpose has already been completed? I remember working with a gal who was embroiled in a fight with two other people at work. Her manager was ignoring some things that needed to be handled and a co-worker was spreading rumors about her. It was difficult because she felt a certain loyalty to both of them. But after sitting down and doing one of these exercises that I'll show you with her in a board of directors, the solution unfolded, right before her eyes. 
as it turned out, the purpose she had once identified for being in that job had been completed. It was complete. Totally complete. She no longer had a purpose for being there. Not only that, but she also discovered that she wasn't a follower, rather, she was a leader. She hadn't even recognized this. So she left the organization and developed her own new business. It was such the right move for her, that her new team materialized right before her eyes and she made almost six figures in a matter of months. You see, she was fighting for how it should be. But it wasn't about the fight with these two people. That was the illusion. She was fighting for her new truth, that she was a leader, that she was meant for more. Makes sense? This is what's possible from doing this work. Determining when your purpose has been completed, and when it's time to identify something new, so that you're always infused with purpose. Insight hash 5, when you are living a purpose-infused life, it becomes effortless. When you're headed in the right direction, when you've got it right, the money flows. In a GPS I'll be demonstrating how to watch for the guideposts that are giving us very clear feedback. Because making almost six figures in a matter of months is undeniable feedback from the universe that we're on the right course. What we're talking about here is our inner GPS. I'll illustrate how to follow our hearts, instead of the thinking, thinking, thinking that our head wants us to do. We must get out of our heads. Our heart doesn't confuse us. It always knows what's right for us, if we ask the right questions. Insight hash 6, sometimes when thinking, thinking, thinking begins to make us crazy, crazy, crazy. We can close our eyes, and put our hand over our heart. It's surprising how quickly that turns off the mind chatter. This technique might seem almost too simple. But that's the genius of it. Simply sit still for a few moments and concentrate on your breath. Concentrate on your heartbeat. Focus on creating a slow, deep rhythm. In just a few minutes, you'll feel your body calm down, and you'll become more relaxed. And your mind will settle, as well. Once your mind is quiet, it is much easier to find focus to think through the possibilities, and create your vision. Creating a crystal clear purposeful vision, and bringing that vision to reality. That's pretty exciting, right? That's what's possible from this work. Is this epoch right for you? This is for you if you know you're meant for greater things, but can't quite put your finger on what that is. You thought you'd pinpointed what you're supposed to do with your life but the universe isn't bringing you any money. You've outgrown your life, or life threw a transition at you, and you're asking, now what? You have a fear of becoming irrelevant. Boy, this one is huge for the guys reading this. When I was researching men, one thing I heard over and over is, I don't have the luxury to figure out what my purpose in life is. But how can we not have the luxury? It created such pain for me to hear that. We'd be doing ourselves and the planet a disservice to not show up in the life we're meant to live. Most of the guys said they'd be willing, even hungry, to take a weekend retreat to explore this subject. You may not yet be ready for such an intensive exploration, but maybe this book will help start the adventure. I created this epoch and all of my other products like the free teleclass at www.findyourpassionatelife.com, because I had to relieve my own pain. I had to try to help people who felt like they didn't have the luxury to explore their own meaning in life and why they're here, and that's why I started these programs. Maybe that sounds selfish? So, my job is to inspire the passionate you to ignite the vision within, and unleash your legacy on the world. How does that sound? If it sounds excellent, then you are in the right place. This isn't for you if you aren't ready to make a change. If it seems too scary right now, if you just aren't ready to confront your greatness, that's okay. Just be careful about staying in status quo. Even though we may not mean to, most people's natural instincts are to fight for the status quo. Subconsciously, 
we work to keep things as they are, even if they aren't the way we want them to be. You see, we like our stories. Even when we're miserable, we find a certain comfort in knowing what to expect of each day. Think about how many people you know who complain about their job, their partner, their house, their lives. But when you suggest a change, they say, oh, I can't do that. At least from now, I know what the problems are and how to deal with them. Insight hash 7, be careful about staying in status quo. Because in actuality, it means we're shrinking. Status quo is our worst enemy when we're stuck in something we don't want to be in. We cling to the way things are because we're more afraid of change than we are of facing old patterns. But those patterns slowly destroy our soul. They pull us away from our purpose. And if we're not careful, we lose sight of our purpose entirely. If that rubs you the wrong way, then let's look at what you can expect. In this book, we're going to cover these five areas, how to discharge the emotional charge that may be a predominant force right now and find inspiration again. Yes, this is the brief section on overcoming invalidation. How to get to know our own natural energy, our intuition, our knowingness, and find the genius in it. How to easily see possibilities in the snap of a finger, and honor our inner wisdom. This is where we'll cover passions and values. My desire is for you to be able to break out of ordinary, whatever ordinary is for you, and get to that next level of greatness. How to explore our evolution, so it can unfold without grasping at it or using some obsessive drive to make it happen. This is my fun little section on our inner board of directors. And I think you'll love it. How to begin to develop a guided road map. This is where we begin to talk about the big daddy, purpose. Partnership I also want to take a minute to share a mindset, and that's the mindset of partnership. I am truly here to serve, and to help us get greater things out of life. That's why I'm here. It's my purpose. I can't turn it off. We all have a purpose. We all have a message for the world. And each of us is like a pebble in a pond. The ripples that spread out from all of us getting out there with our messages is going to have a massive effect on the planet because people need what we do. So partnership is coming from that place. I'm your friend who supports this endeavor and cares about it deeply. I want to share information that will make a difference, and a knowledge that will help you move farther and faster. If you're committed to that. If you're ready to take those actions. Then you're ready to dive right in. Or maybe you're just sticking a toe in water? So you need to know that I'm committed, but not attached. What I mean is that throughout this book you will get a taste of my home study course called Unleash the Vision Within and I'm committed to giving you everything I can hear. But I'm not attached to whether you move forward into any of my other programs. I know if you take advantage of the home study course with any bonuses and special offers and amazing incentives, that's awesome. You will find many more opportunities to find your passions and values and develop your purpose. But I also know that if you decide to think about it and come back later, that's okay, too. The bonuses may not still be there, but the program will still be worth it, 100%. Either way, I'll still be here for you, through my blog and social media. I'm always here. Moving forward are you reading this ebook because you're eager to move forward in your life? Maybe you're at a crossroads, a point where you don't quite know what direction to choose. Maybe you don't want to just blindly search for the answers. Maybe you're seeking guidance and looking for a way to determine the right path. So, here's a tip, when standing at a crossroads, always choose in favor of your passions and values. I want to see us all moving forward in our passions and purpose, and a full-blown transformation. That's our Zazazu. So there will be a lot of little tools here, and they can be used immediately to increase our level of passion and purpose. Even income, which I'm sure we all want. And then you can keep going even further with this, if you want to, and I'll tell you more about that later. I know that we sometimes wonder if we're on the right path, 
and we're questioning our life. We sometimes say, I'm so over it. Walking around in a fog, with no real direction. We sometimes feel embarrassed, confused, kind of tired of it all. Embarrassed because we know we're meant for greater things. Confused because we aren't sure what that greater thing is. Tired of it all because it's begun to feel monotonous or just so ordinary. I know that can create some pain, because I've lived it. I've had question marks circling over my head, and if you know me, you know how I feel about those question marks. I have people from all over the world who say, your story is my story. Maybe you can say the same thing. I know that we all get to a point where we know we want something more in life. Or maybe we aren't getting to that point. Maybe it's already been with us for a long time. Answering the big questions one of my clients told me a story of when he was a little boy. He went to his dad and asked him, why are we here on earth? His dad, in his easy chair and watching the ball game, said, don't bother me, boy. So he went in the kitchen and asked his mom, why are we here? His mom said, don't question God, honey. He never did get an answer. Maybe for you, these questions have been around for a long time. Maybe you felt like your life's journey has been derailed by something outside of your control, or maybe you've derailed it with your own unique brand of sabotage. We've all been there, right? What I often hear from really smart women is, I feel successful on the inside, but it isn't reflected on the outside. Or sometimes I hear just the opposite, I look successful on the outside, but I'm a mess on the inside. I even had someone tell me, I feel successful, but it also feels kind of mediocre. I'm accomplished, so now what? Do I have the right to question my life when I'm this successful? Or should I just be grateful? Is it wrong to feel mediocre? Let me ask you this, no matter who you are, or where you are. Do you have a sense that you should be doing greater things? Then it's time to slice through mediocrity. One of the most common struggles I hear is about being stuck. I'm so fed up being stuck in this place, and don't know how to get out of it. If this is you, don't worry, we're going to talk more about that. Being stuck is a huge topic. It's one of the worst things that can happen to a human being being stuck and feeling like you don't know how to get out of it. I've dealt with this issue myself. With all of my successes. With all of my awards. With all of the acclamations I received. I've still felt stuck at times. But I'm here to tell you that we can get unstuck. In fact, if you're feeling stuck right now, you can visit www.remishorse.com and grab 5 free videos called How to Get Unstuck. So, do you guess the feeling that something is missing, but can't quite pinpoint it? Do you feel kind of lost? Do you have a pull or a longing for what's the purpose of my life? And now, are you ready to move forward? If so, you're ready to discover who you were created to be. You're ready to break through ordinary and fulfill your life's legacy. You're ready to move past all the question marks in life and find your exclamation points. And I'm here to help you do all of that. We are on the same team. My promise so here's my promise. I'm going to lay out some ways to get started right away in finding your passionate life so you can take back those exclamation points get out of the ordinary, and break through to the life you're meant to live. We're going to look at some ways to get a jump start on your transformation, and I'm giving about 30% of my full program here. The other 70% is in the home study course, Unleash the Vision Within, which is available if you're aching to close the gap from where you are to where you want to be. I'll share more about that before the end. But right now we're looking at the basics and this will be plenty to get us started. As we go, we'll cover the five steps to finding your passionate life, and under each one, I'll give the definition of that topic to show where I'm coming from. I'll give an exercise. And then I'll leave an easy tip for getting started. And then I'll give some other resources as we go, on where you can get more information. 
So, before we really get started, you're going to need to grab a notebook. Nothing big, mind you. Just a place to write down your responses to each exercise as we go through them. So let's zudge up our sleeves and get rolling. We're going to start with the number one thing that turned up in my research on why someone isn't reaching the level of success they want. Overcoming invalidation those who know the least, know it the loudest Chuck Goetzel warning. We're entering controversial territory and this may be hard to handle. I'm going to ask you to recognize those people and situations in your life that are causing you to move farther and farther away from your soul. Maybe this won't relate to you. Maybe the people in your life are supportive and encouraging. But you may know someone who's going through invalidation right now, and you may be able to save their life. So, as you go through this uncomfortable section, keep an open mind and an open eye to others in your life. Okay, so what exactly is invalidation? Everyone experiences invalidation sometimes. It's the thing that creeps into your life and steals your exclamation points. Invalidation happens when someone takes you down a notch by branding you unreasonable, illogical, or wrong. They can do this by ignoring your needs, refusing to believe you, pretending you don't exist, or by simply telling you, either outright or through their actions, that you don't matter. The result? The wind goes out of your sails. You feel discredited, crippled, even totally nullified. There's really no way to talk about this without making people uncomfortable because, when you get right down to it, invalidation is uncomfortable. It takes you, in all your strength and glory and greatness, and cuts you off at the knees. I just want you to know this is the single hottest topic I have, so if you've ever gone through this, you aren't alone. The funny thing is, many people don't even realize they're being invalidated or discounted. Our world tends to want us to be accepting of others, to give others the benefit of the doubt, and that can throw us into some gray area. We hear their invalidating comment, but instead of being outraged or offended, we say, oh, he didn't really mean it that way. I'm taking it too personally. But wait a minute. We should take it personally. We should never allow anyone to make us feel inferior. May I just say. Giving others the benefit of the doubt has been the single biggest place I've tripped for most of my life. Because, while it's necessary in some instances, it can also completely shroud invalidation. So here's a good tip. Insight Ash 8, before you give somebody the benefit of the doubt, take a moment to make sure there's no hidden agenda you may be missing. Look at the root word in the phrase, benefit of the doubt. The word I am looking at is doubt. If you have a doubt, that's a red flag. Pull out the flashlight and shine it on that doubt. You know you're being invalidated by how you feel. If you feel like you aren't real, like you don't exist, like you don't matter. If you feel less than, you are under invalidation. Period. This is not a gray area. Inside Tash 9, the question we need to ask if we think we may be under invalidation is, how do I feel? Being invalidated can happen anywhere. By anyone. At any time. Is it invalidation? Or something else? There are simply dozens of stories I could tell you about invalidation. Some of them are incredibly obvious to everyone, but others are intensely personal and maybe not as obvious because we're too close to the situation. One of my friends is the mother of a tween. You know, that 12 going on 18 kind of daughter. And, like many tweens, her daughter was often, shall we say, difficult. She was going through the typical tween rebellion, refusing to listen, arguing with her mother about everything, and defying long-standing house rules. Whenever my friend would call her on her bad behavior, her daughter would say, chill, mom. It's not that big a deal. You're getting yourself all worked up over nothing. And my friend actually allowed her daughter's words to sink in and start burrowing deep into her self-consciousness. My friend worried that maybe she was making too big a deal over nothing. She allowed that thinking process to undermine her own beliefs and values about being a parent. 
But, was it invalidation? So we talked about her values and how she handled similar situations in other settings, with other people. And she realized that her concerns were unfounded. Anywhere else, she was confident in her decisions and didn't really question them. She didn't agonize over details or stress about minor issues. But when it concerned her daughter, she felt uncertain. Growing up, her own mother had constantly undermined her self-esteem and my friend worried that she was doing the same to her own daughter. She came to realize, however, that it was exactly because of her upbringing that she was able to be certain of her values. She could feel proud that she was raising a daughter who was self-confident and unwilling to let others undermine her, even if it meant that my friend had to endure a little teenage rebellion as a result. Were her daughter's comments invalidating? If my friend felt belittled then, yes. But that wasn't the case. Sometimes it's helpful not to micromanage communication, but instead look for the lesson or opportunity within it. Insight hash 10, opportunities to crystallize our own values are always around us, if we know how to look for them. An all too common story of invalidation let me tell you another story. Andrea recently began to realize that she was being invalidated by her longtime boyfriend. And it had been happening for quite some time. Andrea is a teacher and frequently stayed after school to grade papers and prepare for the next day. This process helped her to work through all of the things that needed to be done for her students, and also gave her a way to ease out of the hectic school day and into a more relaxing and enjoyable evening. And, on Fridays, she'd join a few of her colleagues for a drink at happy hour before going home. Whenever her after-school grading sessions ran late, her boyfriend would complain that she wasn't showing him enough attention. And she must be wasting a lot of time at school during the day because she couldn't get her work done during her official hours. She found herself trying to explain to him how complex and involved her job was, and she began to question herself. Did she really need to stay after school to get work done? Did she really need to spend time with friends after work? Was she really not spending enough time with her boyfriend? Now, Andrea had not had the best examples of relationships, so she gave her boyfriend the benefit of the doubt. She really began to think that she was the one causing the problems in the relationship, and that he was only trying to remind her of what a good relationship was about. She began leaving school right after the students left, and taking work home with her instead. She found the transition difficult. Taking the work home with her meant bringing the stress of her job into her home life. Not only that, but she gave up her weekly happy hour time with her friends, a ritual that had helped her decompress a little each week, and nurture her relationships outside of her home life. But her efforts didn't make things better. Instead, her boyfriend began to accuse her of trying to cover up an affair, despite the fact that she was now home with him almost all the time that she was entered school. It made her anxious. Her friends could see the strain she was under. They reminded her of what a good teacher, and person, she was. As she began to open up to them, her friends were supportive and encouraged her to be true to herself. She focused on her feelings and realized her friends were right, but the process was difficult. She had lost sight of her values as a result of his invalidation and was doubting herself. However, as she began to focus again on her own values, she got strong enough to walk away from the relationship. Focus on the positive if any conversation makes you feel inferior, you are under invalidation. Now. We get to choose how we feel, no one else is responsible for how we feel. I'm not talking about that. I'm only talking about how to recognize invalidation, so that we don't become ruled by it. The thing to know is that invalidation is never ideal, and someone is trying to control you. So we can empower ourselves by walking away from experiences that are invalidating. No conversation necessary. Just walk away how did my friend decide to handle her tween she didn't confront her daughter or try to convince her otherwise what would be the point it was her daughter's way of asserting her own mind 
Instead, every time her daughter accused her of being too anxious, or too controlling, or too, well, anything. My friend simply smiled. She knew, because she knew her own values, that her decisions were right. It didn't take long for her daughter to realize that she wasn't going to win any arguments with that line anymore. And they were both able to keep a more positive attitude. And in the second story, the invalidation was clear. When you give someone the benefit of the doubt yet you still doubt yourself, then the perfect course of action is to check in with your own values and reassess the situation. If it's appropriate to walk away, then do so without even looking back. I once had a manager tell me, if you are gonna lose, lose fast. So smile and move on, knowing your values are strong and intact. Now, whether you're regrouping from a teenage battle, or transitioning out of a relationship with Mr. Wonderful, there still may be some residual negative charge. So I'm going to give you one of my favorite ways to discharge the emotional charge that can come from invalidation. Even more tips like effectively using the stop sign hand technique, are in my home study program at www.unleashthevisionwithin.com. Here's my favorite tip for now. In Site Ash 11, when somebody invalidates you by ignoring your needs, refusing to believe you, pretending you don't exist, or by telling you that you don't matter, find something positive about that situation. Now this may seem oversimplified. Some people find the positive by jumping on the nearest chair and shout at the heavens in utter gratitude, thank you, God. And do a little boogie dance. It may seem completely unnatural to say thank you when we're in the middle of being hurt. Look, I have been shredded to the core more than once in my life, believe me. Sometimes I've spun out of control into more anger than should be humanly possible and other times I've ended up on the bathroom floor, sobbing uncontrollably. So believe me, I know that this one tip to find one positive thing seems a little simplified. Even being invalidated can help us to grow. When we recognize invalidation for what it is, we can also recognize our own truth behind it. When we know someone's words are invalid, we can rejoice in realigning with the truth. So you start with one positive thing. I know my own truth. So take a moment to say, thank you, God. Yes. Thank you. You'll be amazed at how good it feels to find an opportunity for growth by recognizing invalidation, and not experiencing pain because of it. Be glad that you know your own value, and don't have to be affected by someone else's lie about who you are. Have enough self-confidence to rail against negative energy and stand strong in your positive energy. Be grateful. Insight hash 12. The energy of gratitude is 5000 times more powerful than any other energy. Being grateful is a wonderful way to look at our lives. When we recognize the positive, even in the worst of situations. It means we are focused on what is truly important to us and we recognize whether a given situation is in line with our values and our purpose. Now dot. We've said our grateful thank you and it's time to go deeper on looking for something positive. If we can come up with just one positive thing, then we can come up with five. If we can come up with five, then we can come up with ten. And if we can come up with ten, we can come up with twenty. And before we even get to 20, our mood will have changed and we'll very likely find some solutions that serve us. This exercise takes us out of effect, and puts us back at cause. Finding the positive, an exercise take a minute to think of a challenge you've had in the last week. And see if you can just find one positive thing about it. Just one. Now, I do want to mention that sometimes our self-confidence is so shot, we just don't even recognize ourselves anymore. We've lost sight of even the simplest positive things in our lives. If that's you, don't worry. If you want to find your inner horsepower again, I'll show you how to get there by the end of this book. Because we all want to be able to access that inner genius, don't we? So, your job right now is to find just one positive thing about a challenge. Maybe you had a confrontation with your boss, 
or a friend, and you were able to diffuse that confrontation without anyone getting angry. Maybe you burned dinner, but managed to salvage it enough that everyone in your family was pleased with the results. Or maybe you just didn't want to get out of bed, but you did. And had a fairly decent day. Ready for the next step? If you can identify one good thing, then you can identify five. Yes, really? You can. And if you're in a place where you feel life is really dragging you down, and you've lost sight of you, then it's time to really start focusing on the positive, do this exercise every night. In Sight 13, at the end of every day, write down five positive things that happened that day. What possibilities could you create for your life, if you practiced just this? What would happen if, at the end of every day, you wrote down five positive things that happened that day? Do that for 365 days, and you'll have almost 2,000 things to be positive about. Would that change your life? Do you think the universe would love your optimism so much, it would bring you even more things to be positive about? Yes. And here's a twist on the exercise. Remember earlier when I asked the question, what are the possibilities in life? I'll bet you just let that comment slide on by without even pondering it. Well, let's do an exercise that I call prosperity possibilities. Write down just one possibility that could bring you prosperity. If you can find one idea, then you can find five. And if you can find five, then you can find ten. And if you can find ten, then you can find twenty possibilities for bringing more prosperity into your life. It could be anything from changing your energy, to creating an action plan. By doing this exercise often, and radiating out into the world those ideas and possibilities, you'll notice that prosperity will automatically be attracted to you. Now let's walk away from this section on invalidation and keep this conversation about positive energy percolating. Finding your energy, harnessing your emotions. Nothing is more important than reconnecting with your bliss. Nothing is as rich. Nothing is more real. Deepak Chopra. I promised to go over how we get to know our own natural energy, and find the genius in it. Let's start with the definition of energy. Energy is our source of available power. It is our vitality. Our life force. When we are engaged in activities that we enjoy, we become energized. The more we like the activity, the more energized we become. Conversely, the more we dislike the activity, the more worn out and tired we become. But did you know that our energy is our most renewable resource? Think about it. Just like a power plant, we can always generate more energy. We misunderstand this concept sometimes thinking that we get energy from other people, and that other people can drain our energy. Well, it's true that other people can drain it, but we sometimes don't realize that we get our energy from all things in nature. All things in nature. The misconception is that we get energy from other people, especially optimists, which we'll talk about later. And there are those people who think they literally have to steal it from us by manipulating or controlling us. They don't realize they don't need our energy, that they can manufacture their own, they can get energy from nature, or that they can get energy from other spiritual or divine sources. So energy is all around us. Our energy interacts with everyone and everything around us. Sometimes in big ways, and sometimes in very small ways. If you've ever had a bad day, then you know exactly what I mean. You sleep through your alarm, and when you finally wake up in a panic, you just know the day is going to be miserable. And, of course, it is. Not because of any cosmic plan to make your life difficult. The keys didn't move in the middle of the night just to make you even more late for work the next day. You left them where you eventually find them, but not until you've sapped even more energy being angry at the universe for being against you today. The energy we put out comes back to us. The people we interact with can sense our harried, hassled and negative state, and they react in the same manner. 
the little things that we don't usually mind are suddenly incredibly annoying. Even the car seems to argue with us when we press on the gas pedal, and every traffic light turns red just as we get to it. Our energy affects everything, and we work ourselves into a state in which nothing positive that happens can ever get through. I'm sure you've heard a lot of people complain about a lack of energy, I'm just so tired all the time. Or, I'm always so busy. When I finally sit down, I just crash. Maybe you are one of those people. We've all been there. Life can be exhausting at times. There are so many obligations to fulfill that we often find ourselves going from one thing to the next without even really taking the time to think about whether we like what we're doing. What happens? We lose track of our own values and desires in order to fulfill those obligations, and we drain all of our energy meeting the needs of others. But when I talk about energy, I'm also talking about emotion. So much of what we do has an emotional connection for us. We don't want to let others down and so we bury our own feelings in order to meet their needs. The end result is we drain our own energy rather than building it up. Insight hash 14, the quickest way to build up our energy after we've let our obligations and to-do lists drain us, is to rekindle our desires and purpose. The truth is, we were meant to become more powerful, to live the life we're supposed to live, and live our true purpose. That power is our energy. Become vulnerable to become more powerful sometimes in order to get more powerful, we might first have to get more vulnerable. And that can be scary. Our instinct might very well be to try to hide from emotions that seem overwhelming or too big. We can remind ourselves to see being more vulnerable as an opportunity. When we let our defenses down just a little, we open ourselves up to new experiences and those experiences help us grow. It gets us out of our head and into our heart. And closer to our dreams. Remember, anything that's truly interesting in our personalities might feel too extreme. Things like passion and anger can come from a place that we want to hide from, push away, or deny. But don't do it. Insight hash 15, don't deny your feelings, even the scary ones. That very same part of you might hold the key to a breakthrough. You know, David is an example of this. He's one of my clients. He had a background in forensic pathology, something he absolutely loved. But he decided to leave the industry after 20 years because someone told him to retire, and it just destroyed his energy. He ended up opening his own business, doing something that paid the bills, and paid them very well. He was secure for the rest of his life. But he was unhappy. David came into my workshop and, as we dug into our passions, he said, you know, there's this one thing I've always loved, and that was being in forensic pathology. I worked a 60 hour week, and it was like I wasn't working at all. I really miss it. I should never have stopped. It's the single, biggest regret of my life. But I'm over 60 now, and there's no way anyone would hire me. Our group sat in awe as we listened to his story, and his very deep love of this work he used to do. His energy and emotion about it was palpable. And somebody asked, maybe this is a dumb question, but could you hire yourself out as a consultant? It was a stunning moment, because he never even considered that possibility. And that's what I mean when I say we're going to create passions, purpose and possibilities. Our energy is all over our true purpose, if we know how to read it. David had to get more vulnerable in order to get more powerful. He wanted to hide from these emotions. This energy. Because it was so overwhelming. He was finally getting out of his head and into his heart. Those emotions that we want to hide, or push away, or deny. That very same part of us may hold the key to a breakthrough. People often ask me what happened to David. People want to know if he went back to his true love. I'll have to tell the rest of the story at some point. It's truly fascinating. Step off the hamster wheel. What would it be like to feel like you're riding on a hang glider instead of a hamster wheel? 
What if you no longer felt the struggle with finances? Even if it's not a struggle now. Imagine you no longer felt like you were cheating yourself just to be responsible and pay the bills? What if you had the financial foundation you want and could see your world expanding? Keep in mind that our true self doesn't deny our destiny, it embraces it. So, no matter how uncomfortable it might be, we need to try to find a way to let that part of us out, even if it's scary. Because there is nothing more dangerous than denial. Insight 16, our true self doesn't deny our destiny, it embraces it. If you'd like to know even more about using your natural born energy and emotions, and discover the life you're meant to live, then this might be a good baby step for you www.remishaws.com slash complimentary discovery session slash one of the hardest lessons I've ever had to learn was about anger. Being a natural born optimist, I don't really feel anger and I don't show anger outwardly. But does that mean it doesn't exist within my energy field? Ah, when I really started examining some of the energy I was experiencing, I realized how it had blocked nearly everything I ever wanted in life for over 40 years. I could no longer deny it was in me. Insight hash 17, there is nothing more dangerous than denial. I was denying my own feelings. You see, a part of me was angry. It seemed like I was always finding myself feeling stuck and not knowing how to get out of it. I'd felt like I kept derailing my life's journey not knowing exactly what the right path was. I'd felt like I couldn't put my finger on what my purpose was or even how to find it. But I'd put on that happy smiley face anyway and trudge on through, all the while feeling like karma was kicking my backside every step of the way. And in denying my feelings, it was eating away at my soul. So how do we stop this cycle? How do we stop screaming at the heavens? Why is this happening? So we can take back our exclamation points? To step out of denial, we must recognize that we are all born with a natural emotion. An energy that comes very naturally. Do you know what yours is? You were born with a seed of positive energy. For each person, it's a little different. Some might be born with eagerness. Some with enthusiasm. Others with curiosity and so on. Over time, we often lose track of that seed. We forget the positive energy that once inspired our hopes and dreams. We get caught up in everyday life and those little annoyances, anger, instead of nurturing that natural positive energy. Finding your natural energy, an exercise see if you can you identify your own natural positive energy or emotion. It might be sunny, trusting, animated, Whatever it is, write down that emotion, plus three definitions or synonyms that resonate with that natural energy. As an example, your most natural emotion might be enthusiasm. And your three synonyms might be buoyancy, brightness, and hopefulness. The goal here is to begin to focus on what drives us. What gets us out of bed in the morning and keeps us running full steam ahead all day long. You may have lost sight of that energy and you probably feel drained and run down as a result. It's time to get it back. Your natural positive energy could be a stable, confident air of certainty. Or maybe your natural energy is to be smoking hot. Whatever it is, it comes most natural to you. Using your energy wisely so the question is, how do we use our most natural energy to resonate with what we want to create so that it moves toward us? How do we use our knowingness, our intuition, and our genius to resonate with what we want to create? The answer to this might already be coming clear. But if not, don't worry. I'll have more tips on this as we go. Because we all want to be able to tap into that most natural energy for us, don't we? Insight Ash 18, what you want in life is already there. It's just waiting for your energy to resonate with it. What you really want is already there. Think about a time when everything seemed to be going your way. How did it start? Chances are, you've forgotten. You remember all the great stuff that happened to you, 
But do you remember the positive attitude you started out with? That positive energy is what attracted the great stuff to you. You see, just as our negative energy attracts negativity, our positive energy attracts positivity. The universe absolutely loves positive energy. The key is to first start off with a positive attitude. We'll cover more of this in a few minutes, but first I want to tell you about Steve. Steve is a perfect example of this energy exchange. As a salesperson in a national retail chain, he had once been known as unbeatable. Yet, he hit a slump and had barely made his quota for several months. His attitude was in the toilet, and his co-workers and friends avoided talking to him. It was a vicious cycle. The more miserable he felt, the more miserable his sales became. The more his co-workers and friends found better things to do than be around him. He was seriously concerned that he might lose his job so he sat down to write up a new resume. Amazingly, as he listed his previous accomplishments as a salesperson, he began to realize he had a lot to be proud of and thankful for. He decided he didn't want to go anywhere. He was really glad to be working for his company. The next morning, he bought pastries for everyone in the office sat and laughed with several of his co-workers that he hadn't spent much time with, and refocused his energy. He started having a good time again at work and with friends. He started working out again and feeling good about himself. Before long, he had made one of the biggest sales of his career. Success. Friends. Enjoyment. Everything he wanted was right there. But his negative energy was keeping it all from reaching him. By opening up his positive energy centers, the possibilities came gushing back. I'm coming from a place of partnership, so I'm not trying to say anybody is doing anything wrong. Sometimes it's perfectly appropriate to have negative energy, depending on the situation you're in. I'm saying that what we want in life is already there, and it's waiting for our energy to resonate with it. So manage your energy to resonate with what you want. How do we decide what we want in life? Well, that leads us to Discovering your values and passions Success is the art of becoming who you already are. Tracy Trottenberg Let's look at how to see possibilities in the snap of a finger, and how to honor our inner wisdom. We'll start with the definition of passions and purpose. As I said before, our passions are what drive us. They get us moving. And they energize us. They help define who we are and help us determine our place in the world. What are your passions? Do you love to learn? Or teach? Or be outdoors? Or be with people? Whatever our passion is, we need to nurture it. It is the gift we have been given to help us understand where we belong, what we should be doing, and how we can help the world become a better place. But many of us deny our passions. We bury them far down on our to-do list, right after take out the trash. After all, we think, with so many responsibilities to fulfill, how can we possibly spend time on the fun stuff? I mentioned this before, we all have at least one true passion in life. And more than that, we have a purpose for being here. But most people don't know what their purpose is. We aren't on this earth to struggle, or even just survive. We were given one unique strength, and that uniqueness is our purpose. With limitless possibilities in front of us, sometimes we need help bringing clarity to our vision, and our vision to reality. This is the heart of my program, and my favorite piece. Even though we'll go pretty deep on this, we can go even deeper as we get into purpose. But until we know our passions, we can't really get into why we're here on this earth. So let's swoop in and look at our passions. Determining your passions, an exercise get out a piece of paper, and write a heading at the top that says, when my life is ideal, I am. Then, write down at least 10 things. Go ahead and start doing this now. Normally, if I'm doing this with you, we'd be doing it privately, and we dig in quite deeply. We would look at the various aspects of your life and consider all of the things that make you smile. 
and I have those private passion test sessions available at http colon slash slash remicourse.com slash products slash but for right now, we aren't trying to save the planet. And we aren't trying to identify the one passion that, if you knew what it was, you could save the world. For now, just scratch out a list, and we'll blaze through this kind of loosely. When my life is ideal, I am. The questions below can help you in creating this list. I also have more of these questions in my national best-selling book, which you can find at www.livinglafizanexclamationpunt.com. I've just pulled out a few of them here to get you going in the right direction to not only find what you're passionate about, but to help you identify your true calling for why you're here on earth, and what you're destined to do with your life. Answer the following questions. What are you naturally curious about? This is essentially about your interests, the things you like to do above all else when you take the time to enjoy them. Think about non-fiction books you enjoy reading documentaries you like to watch newspaper or magazine articles you always read in other words, what do you enjoy learning about? Often when we're drawn to something naturally, we enjoy doing it the most. Your answers to this question indicate areas where your passions may lie and areas that you might want to get more involved in, whether professionally or just to satisfy your soul, it's a common misconception that our job must reflect our passions. What would you love to do or accomplish before you die? Thanks to that wonderful movie starring Morgan Freeman and Jack Nicholson, many people refer to this as a bucket list. In other words, if you knew how little time you had left on earth, what would you do? Where would you go? Consider all of the amazing things you've ever dreamed about. Make a list, and try to make it as big as you can. What people do you want to get closer to? What places do you want to visit? Where would you like to live, if you had the opportunity? What challenges would you want to overcome? When you read over your list, you should have an idea of not just your goals, but also your values, what's important to you. How you would like to live your life. See if you can spot any themes in your bucket list. What would you like to hear at your funeral? Imagine you're watching your own funeral. Everybody close to you is there. One by one, they step up to give a speech. What would you like to hear them say about you and your life? What kind of a friend, or colleague, or family member were you? What character traits will you hope people saw in you? What contributions and achievements would you want them to remember? What difference would you like to have made in the lives of the people around you? The answers to these questions will help give you additional insights and perhaps a new perspective on what you value, and how you would like to live your life. If you allow your mind to really wander, you might be surprised at how extensive your list is. But there may also be a pattern. Do you notice that family seems to take center stage? Or maybe a desire to explore the world? Maybe you see your penchant for music, or nature, or learning coming out in your list. Whatever you see here, don't try to limit the list or categorize it. This is a brainstorming session, not a final draft. Be imaginative but be true to yourself. What were the activities or tasks you were doing when you felt most empowered? Many times we fall into situations that ignite our passions. We find that we are very good at organizing fundraisers or leading a scout troop. At work, we might find that our bosses choose us for specific tasks because they recognize the talents we have. Think about the jobs you have had, volunteer work, and awards you've won. What were you doing when you felt the happiest, most productive and eager? When did you feel like you had made a worthy contribution? When has someone told you to go home because it was 5 o'clock, and you just didn't want to stop what you were doing? When have you had such a completely awesome day, you couldn't even sleep from all the excitement in your system? When you are passionate about some project or assignment, you feel energized and on top of the world. Even hidden abilities and talents come to life, and you find you're able to do more and go further than you ever imagined. Find a time when you felt this way, 
and you've found a major clue to your passions. What would you most like to be acknowledged for so far in your life? What are the accomplishments you are proud of, big or small? This can be in any facet of your life, family, friends, work, church. You name it. Do you take pride in a spotlessly clean house? Or your knack for getting anyone to relax and talk freely? Or maybe your ability to always find just the right solution to a problem? You only take pride in things that matter to you. What ideas are you most inspired by? Why? The ideas might be about life, career, or society, anything from carbon emission free living to a world where intercultural understanding prevails. If there is an idea that really inspires you, that could very well be your purpose. With whom would you like to surround yourself? What kinds of people would you like to be surrounded with in terms of lifestyle, occupation, wealth, interests? The old adage holds true, show me who your friends are and I'll show you who you are. You become who you drink coffee with, so the type of people you want to have around you should tell you what kind of person you want to be. Think about their behaviors, actions, interests and activities. Then, think about what you admire about them, and what you don't. Often, it is like holding a mirror to yourself. What would you do if you could implant a chip in your brain that totally erased your fear of failure, of not surviving, of making a mistake, of looking stupid? If there is no fear of failure, there are no limits. So what would you do? Think without limitations. Have you heard of that movie called Limitless? The idea is that we only use 10% of our brain, and if we could take a pill to access the other 90% of our brain, we could do amazing things. So if you could totally raise any fear of not surviving or of making the biggest mistake of your life, and just be sassy out there in the world, what would you do? What would you do if you married a billionaire, bought all the houses and cars you wanted, donated to every charity you wanted to? and then became totally bored with the idea of money? Then, what would you do next? If you're just left with your own creativity, your own genius, what would you do? We don't often get to think about what we would do if money were no object. Sure. We may fantasize at times, about the things we could buy or the places we could go, but what would you do after you fulfilled those dreams? And now the question that usually stops my workshops cold. What makes you angry? When something makes you angry, it means you care about it and that the issue is close to your heart. So what makes you biting angry? What burns you up at the core? What makes you want to grit your teeth and spit nails? Want to know what it is for me? Invalidation. It makes me spitting mad to see someone stealing someone else's light and energy. This is where I start to get a bit feisty. What is it for you? How did you do? For many people, starting the list is difficult. We don't take time to really focus on ourselves much, and doing so seems indulgent, and maybe even a little taboo. But if we really care about finding our passion in order to find our purpose, then we understand that doing so is actually helping everyone in the world. As we start to think of how we can make a difference while we're here, it becomes much easier to focus on those things that really matter to us. The next step now that you have created this list, you'll probably want to take all the notes you've started to make and rewrite everything to fit within the frame of categories. As you do, you'll see that some things aren't necessarily passions but may be things that go on a to-do list underneath one of your passions. They're fun, interesting, or challenging, but not really the center of your world. They aren't the things that make you jump for joy or start dreaming of a future. And after some light categorizing, you should ultimately end up with a refined list of about 10 true passions. Now take that list of your top 10 passions and then compare them to each other one by one as if you were in front of the ice cream counter. Which do you love more? Rocky Road or Pralines and Cream? If it's Rocky Road, then you compare that to your next passion. Which do you love more? Rocky Road or Strawberry Shortcake? 
and so on until your five top passions emerge in a passionate priority. For me, this method of prioritizing passions works absolutely brilliantly, especially when I do it with a friend. A friend can help you talk through the choices and keep you in your heart. Because you should always choose with your heart, and not your head. If you really, really want to do this right, if you want to burrow into your psyche and emerge with something more than just a quick surface answer, you can join me for a one on one personal session. But that would be a shameless plug, nevertheless, the passion test is an option available at http colon slash slash remicourse.com slash products. Passions are what we want. Values are who we are. How do you determine exactly what your values are in the first place? To start, let's define values. Basically, values describe what's important to an individual. Our values are our compass. They can be ethical or moral values, political or religious values, social or aesthetic values. It comes down to what you believe is important in life. And just because we valued something when we were 20 doesn't mean we still will when we're 40. Values can evolve and change over time, based on our experiences in the world around us. So this could very well be an excellent time to take stock of what is most valued at this point in life's journey. The following exercise will help. Determining values, an exercise make a list of every value you can think of that is important to you. Peace. Abundance? Integrity? Knowledge? What do you believe in, to your core? What is it that you'll stand up for? Think about every facet of your life, family, friends, work, animals, your spiritual journey. It's all important. If you need some help, search what are values on the internet and look for some values lists. You can find lists with hundreds of values that people aspire to maintain. Once you come up with your top 20 or so, write them down on little slips of paper and lay them out in front of you, so you can move them into priority order. What are your top 10? If you're like me, you may be drawn to a lot of values. It's like sitting down in a restaurant where you like every single thing on the menu. But this exercise is about discovering the values that are most important to you, so it's imperative to narrow your list down to 10. Write those 10 values down, and next to each value, write 3 or 4 sentences describing what the value means to you. This will help you get a clearer idea of what exactly is important to you and why. Let's take integrity as an example. We might focus on the fact that having integrity means that people can trust us, in business, in our home life, and in friendships. It means that we always do what is right, even when no one is watching. Not because we worry about what people might think, but because it's the right thing to do. It's crucial to be clear about this. In Citation 19, with clarity comes power. You will literally start to attract more of what you want in life simply by reinforcing what matters most to you. When we take the time to write about each of our values like this, it helps clarify what we believe and what we want out of life. And the universe responds in kind. When we focus on what we want, we begin to attract those things into our lives. Going deeper the next step is to try and whittle the list of 10 down to 5. I'm not saying that any of your values should be thrown away, we're simply looking for your most important values, those values that will guide you in making decisions. What you have left in front of you will be your core values. Those will tell you what you are all about. Once you know your most important values, they will become a guiding light for you, and a way to begin organizing your life. They will give you a sense of direction as you begin to establish the goals you want to achieve. It also helps to silence the chatter. You know what I'm talking about, those voices in our heads, and maybe the voices of the people around us, who are constantly trying to determine our course for us. When we take the time to really consider what we stand for, what we want, and what our passions are, we'll come away more clear and more powerful and we'll be able to turn off our own doubts and fears and even answer the concerns that other people have for us.
As I've said before, until you know your passions and values, you can't really get into your purpose, and why you're here on this earth. If you want to find a more genuine and fulfilling level of success, I'll show you how to get there before the end. Because we all want to know our true life's purpose, don't we? If you'd like to know even more about using your values to set goals, or how to structure your life around your most important values, we go into great detail in my home study program at www.unleashthevisionwithin.com, where we cover 75 values and help you get your best ones flushed out. Standing at the crossroads once you know your core values, using your instincts becomes much easier. But without identifying your core values, you're sometimes left to your snap judgments when making a decision, instead of knowing why you're moving in a particular direction. In Ash 20, when standing at a crossroads, always choose in favor of your passions and values. Every time we are faced with a decision, we are challenged to evolve, to align with our higher self. But the crossroads may be an illusion. If we're clear on what we want and what we believe, then there often isn't much of a decision to make. That's why you always choose in favor of your passions and values. This has become a magnificent guiding light for me. And it's sometimes surprising how it helps along life's journey. This tool is has been paramount in my evolution, and it probably will be for you, too. Finding clarity Do you know somebody who seems to always make bad choices in life? They don't mean to, but it just keeps happening. I often think of young people when I consider this deeply. They are just starting to figure out what their desires, dreams, and values are. And they are constantly faced with temptations that draw them away from their focus on what is truly best for them. Many haven't had the life experiences or guidance that helps them make good decisions. So they're left with the advice of friends and acquaintances who are often just as poorly prepared. I'm reminded of Jared. He was born to a single mom, and his father was not in the picture at all. By the time he was 15, he had lived in six different cities and towns, and had attended at least a dozen different schools. His mother had managed to stabilize their life by the time he was in high school. She worked to get him into a small town school district with an excellent reputation, but she was working to jobs to keep him there. As a result, she hadn't been able to be there for him, to guide him as he navigated the perils of young adulthood. Jared dreamed of being an actor and a comedian and he was good at it. He rarely got in trouble in class, even when he should have because he could always make his teachers laugh. But even in a good school, Jared seemed to find the worst kids to hang out with. He drank, did drugs, and barely passed his classes. He was on a path to self-destruction and it didn't seem like anything could derail him. And then it happened. One of his friends died of a drug overdose. As tragic as it was, Jared suddenly got clarity. He'd heard all the warnings, all the dangers, and hadn't once taken them seriously. Until suddenly it was very real, and very serious. Jared sat down with his counselor and talked through all of his issues, all of his concerns and all of his hopes and dreams for the future. He began to focus on what he valued in life, family, hard work, laughter, friends, and stability and he realized he hadn't been living his life with those values in mind. Once he realized that focusing on his values would help him fulfill his purpose, he was able to start making better decisions. He started hanging out with better friends and getting better grades. He graduated from high school with plans to go to college for a business degree. Why business, if he really wanted to be in the music industry? Because he knew the odds, and the dangers, of being successful. He wanted to understand the way the business world worked so that he wouldn't be taken advantage of once he became successful. And, he also began to realize that his talent often shone best when he was behind the scenes, and a business degree would take him farther in the music industry than his onstage talent ever could. For most of us, it won't take such tragic events to get us to refocus our lives. 
but we can all probably remember the pivotal moment when we realized we weren't living our dreams. Identifying Pivotal Moments An exercise Think of a pivotal moment in your life, one where you suddenly realized you weren't living your dream, when you began to realize that something just wasn't right. Now answer the following questions about that moment, what caused this revelation? It might be as profound a moment as Jared experienced, or it might be as simple as waking up after a dream and realizing your life is off track. Was that realization based in a particular value you held? Did you make a change? Or did you deny your dream and hope for the best? What happened as a result of your action? Or in action? Taking the time to do an exercise like this, where we identify our values can help us get clarity, and start choosing in favor of our passions and purpose in life, rather than stumbling blindly through our decisions, hoping for the best. Keeping it all in mind now that you have made your lists of passions and values, what are you going to do with them? It might seem like the exercise is over. The work is done. But the work is only beginning, and if you just throw those lists in a drawer, you might soon find that you have lost focus again. So, how can you keep your passions front and center? Post those lists in a place where you're likely to see them often. For me, that's on my fridge. For a friend of mine, it's in her bathroom, right next to the mirror. She actually typed them up in a beautiful font and framed them. Michelle actually has several lists that she keeps on her fridge. As a single mother of two children, she found that the divorce, a house in bad repair, and some bad financial decisions had left her deeply in debt. She struggled to come to terms with her divorce and what that meant for her future and the future of her children. Once she sat down and worked through identifying her passions and values, she was able to find her way through to getting back on track. Of course, it wasn't instantaneous. But having the list helped her focus on what really mattered. She sold her house and moved into a rental in order to add a measure of control to her expenses. This allowed her to establish a base. But then came the to-do lists. Each one is based on one of her core values. For example, her number one core value was to provide a stable and active life for her children. So, she listed the things that her children loved to do that she wanted to provide for them, camping, softball, violin, scouts, and family vacations. But she also knew that a big reason that her marriage failed was because she had slowly lost herself in all the responsibilities of being a wife and mother. The things that she had once loved, she had given up, one after the other, until there was very little of herself left. So her second list is about her passions and the activities she wants to enjoy, kayaking, biking, traveling, reading. My favorite list on her fridge isn't even a list. It's a vision board of all the things she wants to buy to help fulfill her passions and values. Never heard of a vision board? More on that in just a moment. You're probably wondering, do I really need to do this? Yes. You'll be amazed at how much of a difference it makes. Putting the list, or lists, in a visible place reminds us of our passions and values on a regular basis. It helps us maintain focus when we get caught up in the challenges of daily life, and it reminds us of our core values when we're trying to make decisions. You might be surprised to know that I don't even keep regular to-do lists anymore. They used to represent a harried lifestyle and endless barrage of what other people needed from me. The way I've reorganized my life is to take my top five passions, and make a to-do list under each passion. This way, every single day, I know I'm getting one step closer to what matters most to me. One step further you're probably starting to get clarity about what you want and how you want to live your life. But for many of us, it is still an indistinct list of ideas. Yes, we want to live comfortably. Or we want to travel. Or be successful at work. But what does that look like? Oh, this is a good time to mention that you have an opportunity to book a free discovery session at www.remishaws.com and get three easy steps to unlock the life you're meant to live.
Insight Hash 21, in order to really visualize what it looks like to live a life driven by your passions and values, create a vision board. Maybe you've heard of vision boards before. Maybe you've even done one or two. If so, you might want to just skip over this section and go to vision boards in the digital age to see how you can update this process. If you've never done a vision board, however, take a moment to familiarize yourself with the concept first. Vision boards are a great way to really get a handle on what our passions and values look like. There are many ways you can create a vision board, but essentially it is a poster you create of pictures of all the things you want in your life that you currently don't have. It can be anything. A picture of your dream house a car or the places you want to visit a picture of a sweet corner office with huge windows whatever. A vision board helps us literally see ourselves in those places, doing the things we want to do. Just like the lists of our passions and values, it helps us to imagine what it is like to live that life. And when we begin to envision it, it begins to happen. Not all on its own, of course. But when we know what we're working toward, we start making focused decisions along the way. In Michelle's case, her vision board was filled with the toys she wanted, a kayak, an iPad, bikes for the kids, all things that helped her fulfill her passions and support her values. Whenever she gets the urge to buy something new, she takes a look at her vision board and it reminds her of what she's saving towards. That way, she has a little more willpower when she has the urge to purchase something else on impulse. Digital age vision boards do the lists and vision boards sound like too much clutter? Or too much cutting and pasting? You might find the website like Pinterest.com valuable as your vision board tool. Pinterest is a game-changing technology. It's more or less the same thing as a vision board, but it's online. When you're surfing the web and find something you love, just pin it to one of your boards. You can also see what other people have pinned to their boards, and share your boards with your friends. A friend of mine has boards for dream destinations, beautiful interiors, and lovely garden ideas. Each of these boards serves as a vision board. On each one, you are letting the universe know what you want, and laying it out for yourself. It helps you truly begin to imagine life once you have reached your goals. You can create as many boards as you want. Still without clarity? No matter what we do, no matter how many lists we create or boards we make, sometimes clarity still eludes us. And that makes it hard to focus on what we truly want. For those times, we need guidance. We need someone to talk things over with. But what do you do when you just need to make a decision and there's no one to talk it out with? Or maybe you just aren't ready to share with anyone else yet? When you just can't get clarity at all, it's time to meet your inner board of directors. A man who wants to lead the orchestra must turn his back on the crowd. Max Lucado While it is wonderful to have friends and family we can go to for help in sorting out life's questions, the reality is, it isn't always possible. It would be nice to run every thought by those we love and trust, but sometimes we have to make those decisions on our own. When our supporters don't, or can't, support us there are times when those we love and trust aren't able to help us because they can't see our vision. Or, our passions and values conflict with the passions and values of those we love. Of course, our families and friends want what is best for us, but what is best for us isn't always clear to others. Many of us can relate to this from our own lives. Have you had an experience where your desires conflicted with someone else's dreams for you? Maybe your parents directed your initial choice for college maybe your husband's desire to live near his family got in the way of you accepting a promotion maybe you have a vision for starting your own business but everyone around you wants you to be practical and draw a paycheck now? That doesn't mean we just drive ahead with our own will and ignore the desires and needs of others. And it doesn't mean that we dissolve relationships because our desires clash. 
but it does mean that we need to really think about what it is we want and how we can get a positive outcome that serves the highest good for everyone involved and how we can stay true to our own passions and values. Not only that, but sometimes a decision might seem to cause conflict between two different values or passions even within ourselves. So how do we reconcile all this? That's when it's time to consult our inner board of directors. Think about the last time you asked yourself, should I just run to Dairy Queen and get one of those chocolate extreme blizzards? Didn't you get into a dialogue inside yourself? Part of you said, oh my gosh. That would be so good right now. Exclamation point. And part of you got all logical, and had a total conversation about fat grams. You have these different parts that help you make decisions, right? This section is all about how to begin to use that inner dialogue in a constructive way so that we can explore our evolution. And allow it to unfold without grasping at it or go into some crazy obsessive overdrive to make it happen. Our inner board of directors is simply a combination of three things, different aspects of our personality our knowledge our experience that we can, and should, consult before making major decisions some of us do this naturally. When we weigh the pros and cons of a situation, we're actually asking different parts of ourselves how they vote. But for some of us who have a single, very strong, personality trait, in my case, it's definitely optimism, taking that extra time to listen to other, less enthusiastic aspects of our personality, doesn't always come naturally. So what do we do? I was making vision boards with a friend one day and we both were cutting out magazine pictures of celebrities. I love to find those photos where someone has just won an Oscar, or dancing with the stars, and they're bailing in the exhilaration of the moment. I like to use those images to remind me of the way I'm going to feel when I reach one of my own goals. My friend, on the other hand, picked up a design magazine and said, I'd like Candice Olsen on my advisory board. Candice, for those of you who aren't obsessed with HGTV, is a well-known television design star. Now, I love Candice. But my friend is a child psychologist. She wasn't planning any design changes in her company, so what could an interior designer have to offer her? A lot, it turns out. Several years ago, there was a massive wave of stickers shirts and bracelets, all bearing the letters WWJD, what would Jesus do? Now, regardless of our religious convictions, we can probably all see the value in this. For many, Jesus was the CEO of their inner board of directors. When they were faced with a dilemma, they simply asked WWJD. And used that as their guide. But your choices don't have to be quite so profound. There are many people whom we admire for their various traits. We like certain celebrities, politicians, friends and family because of characteristics they possess. Now, my friend couldn't exactly call up Candice Olsen and ask her advice. But, by thinking what would Candice do? My friend was able to call on a certain trait of Candice's that could help her make better decisions. A trait she admired. This led to a far-reaching conversation where my friend and I recruited, at least in our imaginations, various celebrities for our pretend boards of directors. We chose each one based on a particular strength we imagined they had. Like, what would Mother Teresa do in this situation? How would Princess D proceed? Would Catherine Hepburn even get involved in this? We then made vision boards featuring our star-studded boards of directors that we could perch in our offices for inspiration. Well, that got me thinking. If we were able to assign each of these celebrities, whom we didn't even know, a strength that inspired us, did that mean we actually possessed that same strength within us? Well, duh. Create your own inner board of directors so I wrote down a list of strengths that I thought would be helpful to me as a business owner, and created my own inner board of directors, and these were some of my strength, or energy, positions, optimist strategist visualizer power babe inner wisdom joy prosperity homeland security. 
then it was time to set up the ground rules. I wanted all my members to have equal say. However, the optimist position and the homeland security position could never have a deciding vote. My optimist would always be yes. Yes. And my homeland security would always be no. No. However, since my optimist is my own greatest strength, that energy would have to be my board's CEO. I wouldn't have it any other way. I actually created a very elaborate Excel spreadsheet for mine. And any time I get hung up on a decision, I consult my spreadsheet. I literally insert a column and type in a short heading to describe the situation that's got me stumped. Then I go right down the list, allowing each board member to type in their response in the space provided for whatever decision I'm trying to make. And what usually happens, is they come up with really great questions that I never thought of to ask, and that actually ends up solving the issue. Insight Hash 22, it isn't always about finding the right solution. Sometimes it's about asking the right question. I have a copy of this spreadsheet in my book, but this is something you can play with on your own. You'll also find the spreadsheet, plus an extended exercise, in the home study course at www.unleashthevisionwithin.com. My own inner board of directors has been instrumental in helping me solve some of the most dire and complex situations. But it's a matter of knowing how to identify them and how to listen to which ones at which time. Split personalities by the way, I want to tell you about Melanie, and I think you'll love this. When we met, her husband had left her, and her father had just died. She was working as an administrative assistant, and feeling a little bit abused with the hours she was working and an absolutely horrendous commute. It was a lot to take, all that one time. She happened to say one day, you know. Part of me wants to keep this job because it's the only stability I have in life right now, and part of me is just so wrung out by it all. Whenever I hear someone say, part of me this, part of me that, that's always my cue to pull out the inner board of directors exercise. So we started dialoguing, and I said let's talk to the part of you that wants to keep the stability, and then after that. I want to talk to the part of you that's just so wrung out. Immediately, she said, I don't know. Maybe I'm being extreme. Because part of me really wants to be a virtual assistant, where I can work with people all over the world, and take on only the projects I want to do, with people I want to work with. And right before my eyes, she's identifying another part of her to bring into the exercise. It went on like this for an hour just in general conversation. But by the time we left McDonald's Playland, which I think is strangely ironic, she had taken something that she wasn't sure she could monetize, and mapped out three specific courses of action to take. Now she has a fulfilling career with a roster of clients who love and adore her. She works the hours she wants to. She makes enough money to tithe, which was very important to her. She feels that her success is aligned with her values now. And her integrity is more aligned, in such a way that she's no longer embarrassed about things she was tolerating. Can you imagine? This is what this work can do. We always want to challenge what's possible. In fact, in just a minute, I'll demonstrate how to use a technique with your inner board of directors to help identify your true purpose in life. This is where it gets really exciting. And you can see how this is all building on each other. First, we want to be sure there's no invalidation in the way then we want to look at our energy, our inner genius, and what energy comes most naturally to us then we'll use these inner parts to help refine our passions and purpose see how it's all coming together. Building your inner board of directors, an exercise so here's the exercise for this section. If you were going to hire your own board of directors, what individuals would you want on your board? Think of Celebrities, past and present Friends or co-workers you admire family members who have given you guidance that has helped you in life Spiritual figures who influence you Make a list of 10 people you'd like to have on your own board of directors, and assign each one of them a role. 
what can each of these board members bring to the table to help you sort through even your most difficult questions and decisions. Next, map out a game plan using this board of directors. Not sure how? Well, don't worry. Of course, I have more tips for you. You'll be able to use your current life situation as an opportunity to grow, and I'll show you how to get there, because we all love a great blueprint, don't we? Insight hash 23. The energy of each of these board members already exists within you. So be sure and write down what special energy they each possess, and how you already possess that energy. Do you know what a mantra is? It's that thing you say to yourself, or to someone else, every time you need advice. With your inner board of directors, each energy position will have its own mantra. Since your inner board of directors is literally made up of the different facets of you, it's perfectly natural for each of them to have their own mantra for you to repeat and draw from when you are asking their advice. For example, my optimist always says, any negative can be turned into a positive. So, in a given situation, the optimist will find positive outcomes, even in a negative situation. Conversely, my officer of homeland security will immediately say, it's too dangerous. Has our attorney reviewed this plan? It sounds like there's a missing objective here. The visualizer will scoff and says, anything can be done, if we just put our minds to it. And she'll lay out what it will look like once I successfully accomplish a task. That's where the strategist comes in, let's look at some different scenarios and mock up some different outcomes. The we can strategize the right direction. Feel free to go great guns into the inner board of directors exercise, because this can be instrumental in refining your vision. How does any of this help me find my purpose? If you've been doing all of the exercises along the way, then you probably already sense the answer of how your inner board can help you find your purpose in life. Insight hash 24 Dialogue with your inner board of directors by asking questions like what richness is waiting for me? What task has my soul agreed to while I'm here on earth? What work am I meant to be doing? Where is my fullest power and how can I use it? Remember a while ago, when I said sometimes it isn't about finding the solution, but about asking the right question. When you're looking for your purpose in life, asking a question like, why is my life so wrong? Is disempowering. But if you ask your inner board of directors one of the above empowering questions, you can use their guidance to help you find your purpose. How cool is that? All of this work is leading to our last section. But before we move on, let's recap the work we've done so far. So far we've talked about Overcoming invalidation Getting to know our own natural energy Finding our passions Identifying our inner board of directors Based on strengths we already have inside us Now let's touch on purpose So we can start to align with our legacy in life Because I just know we want to find fulfillment By awakening and embracing our legacy While I don't really have space in this epoch To go into all of the detail I would like That could be an entire book on its own I at least want to get us started on these basics. Because even with these little baby steps, we'll be seeing such amazing results. We're going to be like a little kid waiting for the ice cream truck. Didn't your ears perk up when you heard the ice cream truck coming down the street? And you'd do anything to find 10 cents to run out and greet him? Can you already see the possibilities, and what would happen if you had the ideal advisory board? and where they could help you go in life. Now, remember that you can use your inner board of directors to help you find your purpose, just by asking each one, what's my purpose in life? We go over this in more detail in the home study course. But for now, let's move on to one of my favorite topics on the spiceometer. And those are the spicy, sexy hot possibilities from knowing your true life's purpose. Find your smart and sexy true life's purpose all our dreams can come true, if we have the courage to pursue them. Walt Disney here we are, closing in on the last and best item. I can't believe how the time has flown. 
But now we're getting into the sexy part. This is an insanely beautiful section on finding your life purpose. This is where we'll begin to develop a guided roadmap that will allow us to flirt with our true calling, and ease us out of any energy that isn't working for us, or any confusing messages that have been in our head. Purpose has three parts let's talk about the definition of purpose. I believe it has three parts, first, is the message you have for the world, and this is your verbal mantra. This is something that you probably say every single time someone wants your advice. This is how you think the world ought to be. Second, is your natural energy. This is what drives you and encourages you. When you're doing something you're passionate about, this part of your purpose is clearly visible in all of your actions. Third, is your legacy, or that thing you want to accomplish before you die. That thing that will make a difference for the world, the thing you're called to do. So purpose is three parts, your message for the world, your natural energy, and your legacy. When you know what you're supposed to do in life, when you know your purpose for being here on earth at this time, that's when you truly begin to experience fulfillment. That's when you can get beyond survival, beyond comfort, and do something that will make a difference on the planet. So as an example, for me, my message to the world is, any negative can be flipped into a positive. Any negative. So flip a challenge on its head, you get an exclamation point instead. Or, for my friends who have been invalidated. Flip a teardrop on its head, you get an exclamation point instead. And that's my mantra, or my message to the world. And then the natural energy I carry around is optimism and I watch that very closely. In fact, I recently had to make a decision to leave a group I was involved with. When I realized they were stealing my energy. Stealing my exclamation points. And making me question my sense of self. I knew it was time to go. So I watch my optimism very closely, I guard it like the jewel of the Nile. It's very important to me. I'm just no good without it. Otherwise, I get all poopy headed, and nobody wants to be around me. In Sight Ash 25, identify your natural energy and guard it closely against the negative energy in the world. And then that third part, is legacy. As an example, my own legacy is to raise the energy of the planet and put more exclamation points here. I do that by teaching people who want to evolve how to live with passion, purpose and possibilities. I teach them how to evolve out of invalidation, and evolve into the life they're meant to live. Because that situation they're in. That problem they're having. It's asking them to evolve. So I help them bring clarity to their vision, their vision to reality, and their legacy to life. That's how I help raise the energy of the planet, and put more exclamation points here. This is so very important. When you're working with your passions, don't you get really excited? When you're sharing that passion with the world, doesn't it make you feel powerful and useful? And don't we all want to leave our mark on the world through our work? A moment of clarity have you ever thought about your defining moment? You know what I mean. That moment when you know your life is exactly what it should be. For many, it is the moment of greatest clarity. It's the moment we see, maybe for the first time, the indelible mark we could leave on the world, if we could only find a way to channel our energies. Linda is a perfect example of this. She had suffered child abuse growing up and this caused a lot of negative emotions and self-destructive behaviors as a teenager. After high school, she worked a number of odd jobs, but couldn't really find value in any of it, and ended up drifting from one to the other searching for something with a purpose. But in her twenties, during yet another stretch between pointless jobs, she was asked to help with a youth camp for troubled teens. There, she saw many kids who had suffered many of the abuses she had experienced herself. And she realized her own past and her natural talents for listening and encouraging had given her the gift they needed to start on the path to recovery. After that summer, Linda applied to the local community college. Despite the naysayers who saw this as one more of her fleeting flights of fancy, 
Linda eventually transferred to, and graduated from, a four-year college with a degree in counseling. She didn't let their negativity bring her down because she had found her passion, all in one defining moment. Identifying your defining moment, an exercise so what about your purpose, now that you have seen an example of mine? Do you have a sense, yet, of the direction you want to go? Of the legacy you want to leave to the world? Look back over your notes on passions and values. Do you see a purpose emerging? Do you feel a pull toward one particular item? Is there a calling, a difference you're supposed to make in this world? If so, write it down. It's no accident that you're on earth at this time, with these particular gifts. I believe this is the single most important thing you can do for your life, find out what your soul's mission is, and then step into affluence where you're paid for your legacy. Ching. In finding your purpose, in finding the life you're meant to live, it will change your world. It will restore optimism. It will open up new possibilities, and a lot of them. Because in finding your purpose, it means you're on the road to a major transformation. At the end of every transformation are all your exclamation points. When you find your purpose in life, that is something to celebrate. When you are connected so deeply to your true inner self, and you know 100% beyond the shadow of a doubt that you're living the life you're meant to live. What a transformation. Wow. Now you're beginning to understand why this work touches me so deeply, and why it is my absolute passion to help you find yours. This is what all my programs are about, to help you through this metamorphosis and into the life you're meant to live. If you don't see an answer emerging on your purpose in life yet, consult with your inner board of directors, one at a time, and journal what they have to say. And if it still doesn't come to you, this next section may reveal the missing piece. Choose the path that challenges you a successful man is one who can lay a firm foundation with the bricks others have thrown at him. David Brinkley when somebody creates a vision, or we laser in on their purpose in life. It's an exciting moment. And while I love those people who walk away from this with a sure-footed confidence, more often than not, I get the what's next? Question. Gosh, what do I do now? Because an automatic extension of creating a vision, is finding a way to up-level your life. This is why I created the unique passion blueprint, so that you'd have your own blueprint to create your own personalized path to wealth. Since this blueprint is truly unique to each individual, there really isn't any way I can explain it well in this ebook. In my private VIP sessions, we delve into your own purpose and create your complete unique passion blueprint together. And I'd love for you to join me in the delicious luxury of that experience someday. HTTP colon slash slash remicourse.com slash product slash. But here, we can at least get started on the process. So what's next? Maybe you have a vision in mind, but haven't quite put your finger on your purpose in life yet. Or maybe you already know what your life's purpose is, but you're still stumbling a little bit in getting a crystal clear picture of how to fulfill it. Maybe you're trying to inch yourself toward a dream or a vision, but you can't quite seem to get it to go, and you can't figure out why. And so you begin to question whether you're going in the right direction, or whether you've found the right it. So, you ask, how do I know I'm on the right path? When you come to a fork in the road, one direction could be a life lesson that totally knocks you down, and the other could end up being your very own personalized path to wealth. So how do you choose the right path that will truly lead you to your life's purpose, and making a difference on the planet? Often. The right path does not immediately seem like the right path. It challenges you. It pushes you right to the limits of who you are and what you can accomplish. And it might even push you right over the line. Sometimes to a moment where your palms sweat with a thought like I can't do this, or where your ego screams who do you think you are. So, how do you know you're on the right path? You know because it aligns with your values. It fulfills your passions and it challenges you. You may have a total emotional breakdown, 
which is a really good sign you're in the right direction, and you may feel completely lost and stumped on what comes next. One thing's for sure, it won't be ordinary. And it won't be mediocre. And there will be many markers along the way that tell you you're going in the right direction. You may have to dig way down deep inside yourself for reserves you didn't know you had, but when you're on the right path you'll find yourself smiling every step of the way. But, isn't there always a but? Sometimes you'll feel as if you're losing ground. Despite knowing you're on the right path, it may feel like you've digressed. It may feel like you're headed the wrong direction. These are normal checkpoints, asking you to evolve. When I'm helping my clients implement their life purpose, or when they come to me because they're feeling stuck, which is really common, or when someone isn't making the progress they want, I generally look at three magical places. Their marketing strategy their most vital action their energy and mindset bear with me a moment. It might seem as if a marketing strategy is just for business, but the three things above can relate to any situation. Whether you are looking to find a partner in life, or find a group of people to enjoy your favorite activity with, you need to do all three things, market yourself, take vital action, and have a good mental mindset. But before we dive into any of that, can we talk about karma? I'd like to introduce a conversation about karma which is one of my favorite topics. You almost can't talk about life purpose. And, how can I up-level my financial picture? Without talking about karma. Karma is essentially a balancing force. In its simplest definition, karma is a matter of cause and effect. The energy we put out is the energy we get back. Our intentions, our thoughts and our actions all contribute to the kinds of things that happen to us in return. Just for clarity, we're talking about what to do when you aren't getting what you want in life, how to choose a path that challenges you, and how karma plays a huge role in this when you decide to change your life. When we choose to follow our passions and values, karma works with us. It begins to open the paths to help us be successful. It can, figuratively, move mountains. Even when the path is not immediately clear, karma seems to step in with a moment we might otherwise dismiss as coincidence. These are the markers, or road signs, we need as indications that we're on the right path. It really is the energy of the universe conspiring with our passions and values. However, this doesn't mean the path suddenly gets easy. A few moments ago we talked about choosing the challenging path. What karma does is throw things out there that help you meet your goals, and maybe even stretch you to a higher purpose. After all, you're the one that got this ball rolling by asking what's my life purpose. When we choose against our passions and values, karma works against us, as well. Have you ever heard someone say, the world doesn't seem to be on my side? Have you noticed how negative these people are? The more they try to do what they think they should be doing, the harder it seems to be, and the more they look at the world around them in a negative light. It's a dangerous downward spiral. Maybe this has been you. Maybe it is you, right now. Trying to find a way out of that downward spiral. The goal, then, is to find clarity in your vision and start making it happen. Get karma working for you. Now, let's assume for a minute that we've already zeroed in on your vision, and really nailed it. Let's assume this is clear, and that you're already heading down the path that's supposed to bring your vision to life. But now you've become stuck. So how do you get it unstuck? How do you get karma to work with you? And that brings us back to our three magical places. Marketing you the first place we look is your marketing strategy. It could be marketing a business, or it could be marketing yourself to find the right mate or the right job. So, hear my words as they apply to you. But I'm speaking now with a slant toward entrepreneurship. Marketing is really all about the way in which you put yourself, or your business, out there into the world. It's the way in which you get your message out. This is really so simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. 
A marketing strategy gets complicated when it gets analytical, and all up in your head, and based on hours and weeks and months of research. A lot of people get tripped up here, in this very traditional marketing method, and make it so complicated. And for those of us who are very creative thinkers, it can become overwhelming and almost insurmountable. The truth is, or at least my truth is, your ideal client is you. So what you're really doing, by aligning with your big juicy vision. By aligning with your purpose in life. By doing what you're meant to do while you're on this planet. Is you're really teaching other people who are just like you, those lessons you've already learned, in those areas where you're now an expert. By the way, you can grab a free teleseminar on this called Create Your Big, Juicy Vision at www.findyourpassionatelife.com. Whether you're a dentist, or a veterinarian, or even if you have a product like exquisite coffee and tea blends, or luxury cars, it doesn't matter. Your ideal client, whether you have a product or a service, is probably still you. See how that works? I could be selling trash bags or iPads, and I still want to work with optimistic people who care about the planet and consider themselves extraordinary. I want to work with people like me. Your life has become your expertise, and these ideal clients want to learn from you. That's why they're attracted to you. They're praying to find you. Their purpose is aligned with yours, their thoughts are aligned with yours, and they are literally on the same path as you. And they want to learn from you, because you are a teacher that they resonate with. This is really the simplicity of your marketing strategy. Are you implementing strategies that you would resonate with? Are you doing teleseminars? Are you speaking, and doing live events? Are you socializing at high-end country clubs? Or, are you instead cold calling and door knocking in your neighborhood, when that's something you wouldn't want someone to do to you? A simple marketing strategy So your marketing strategy is very simple, only four steps. Step 1. Find out where your ideal clients hang out. Or, more specifically, where do people like you hang out? If you're living your life guided by your passions and values, then this should be an easy step to fulfill. Step 2. Decide how you want to show up there. Remember, you're trying to attract people like you, so you need to present yourself as yourself. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make is thinking they need to dress the part. What part is that, really? Step 3. Take action, like some kind of promotional action. Sometimes it can be as simple as saying hi. It's amazing how easily we can accomplish our goals by just starting a conversation. Step 4. Watch your results and make adjustments. Well, there's actually a step 5. Repeat this over and over, tweaking as you go. After all, we don't always get it 100% right the first time. Even when we're being true to ourselves, we get nervous. We misstep. We don't put ourselves fully out there, and we don't always recognize the best ways to market to ourselves. I've had many duh moments when I've realized a simple fix to my own marketing strategy and wondered why I didn't see it before. It doesn't matter if you have a social media strategy, like doing Facebook ads to promote your teleseminars. Or if you network at conferences and other charity events. Whatever your strategy is for meeting you, or people just like you. This is the first thing we'd look at if you aren't getting what you want. Ask yourself, are you showing up as you? That's really an energy question. So even if you don't have a business, if you're looking at your corporate life, or even looking for a partner in life, I'm hoping you can see the big picture in this. Are you showing up as you? So that's the first of the three places we'd look, if you aren't getting the results you want. What is your most vital action? The second thing we'd look at is your most vital action. There's usually one thing that you must do for a program to be successful. Maybe it's a certain number of follow-up calls. Maybe it's a training that you need to take. Maybe it's putting more of your network to work helping you make even more connections. But there's always one thing, 
that if you don't do it, the entire system will collapse. We actually go over this in detail in the Unleash the Vision Within Home Study course, and we also cover the five most common areas where people get stuck. For now, however, think about what must be done in order to start bringing more action into your vision. What is your energy and mindset? Honestly, and this may surprise you, negative energy and mindset can wreak havoc on your pursuit of your passion and values. On your business. On your love life. On your relationships with your friends, family, acquaintances and clients. If your energy and mindset are off, all the action in the world won't matter. I'll say it again. If your energy and mindset are off, all the action in the world won't matter. And this is the third area we look at, your mindset, your emotional tone, your state. All these areas that fall under energy. Insight Ash 26, when you're feeling stuck, it isn't usually the situation. It's your energy. You can make 100 calls a week. You can send out thousands of direct mail pieces. You can blast out advertisements and press releases until the cows come home. If your energy and mindset are off, all the action in the world won't matter. So truthfully, the thing I'm most interested in is your energy. Believe me, I've lived this. It's tremendously important. And there's one particular energy that is crucially important to look at, but we'll cover that one shortly. For now, let's get back to karma. Understanding your soul, an exercise. So we were talking about choosing the right path, and to always choose the path that challenges you. And we were talking about karma. We're talking about what to do when you're faced with these energy or mindset challenges, or when you're faced with invalidation, either in your current environment, or invalidation that's left over from a previous relationship. Can you draw a stick figure? We're going to bring this all together now. And I want to show you something interesting. So get out a little doodle pad, and we're going to draw some stick figures. I want you to draw a circle, and that circle will represent your soul. And then draw a little stick figure inside that circle, and that represents you. Your soul is much bigger than you are, but you are a part of your soul. If your entire soul were to embody you, you'd probably explode. The energy would just be too much for a physical body. So your soul will incarnate into a lifetime to learn the lessons it wants to learn, here on the physical plane. You may or may not agree with me. And if you don't, that's fine. Just take in the concept, and I still think you'll get the idea. Next, we're going to draw another you somewhere far outside the circle, or far away from your soul. Now, when you're inside the circle, this represents you and your soul as one. When you're far outside the circle, it represents you as detached, or splintered, from your soul. What I like to do is draw a dashed line between your soul, and the you outside of your soul, to represent a tension line. It has tension. Think of it this way. If you were attached to your soul with a rubber band, and you tried to walk away from your soul, the rubber band would stretch, but always allow you to come back. Right? But you could also walk far enough away from it, that it could snap. Makes sense? Now, inside the circle, or even around the circle, write down words such as intuition, inspiration, compassion, perception, gratitude, appreciation, unending love, wisdom, forgiveness and even clarity. These would be qualities of your soul. And way outside the circle, with the you that has become detached from your soul, write down words such as doubts, frustration, confusion, worry, conflicts, victim, blame, and even anger. So how do we use this information? Take a moment and think about the way all of those negative emotions such as doubts, frustration and confusion have affected your life. All of those things create distance between you and your soul. Especially anger. Anger. What happens when you feel it, whether it is towards someone else, or a situation, or even a place, such as a church, a school, or your job? You don't want to deal with the emotion, 
so you simply avoid the cause of that emotion. Anger serves one purpose, to create distance between you and those things that you might otherwise value, your family, your religion, your education, even your livelihood. And more importantly, it pulls you away from your soul. Insight Ash 27, remember that anger has its own purpose, to create distance. Your goal should be to start turning away from those negative emotions and turn back towards your soul. Learn to let go of your anger and fear and all of the rest. Look at life with gratitude for what you have accomplished and the things you have come to understand, rather than with anger or despair over things that cannot be changed. So, while we're here in the Earth University, or the Earth School, our job is to learn what we need to learn to get back to the natural qualities of the soul. And some of you will immediately see this as a clear division between fear and love. Banishing negativity of course, as we mentioned very early in this book, we run into a lot of negativity in this world. It can come from anywhere. That last activity probably showed you how easy it is to give in to your own internal negativity, those distractions that keep pulling you away from your purpose. People get addicted to a story. And the interesting thing about addictions is, it's a place in life where you are controlled by external circumstances. Maybe it's cigarettes. Maybe it's sugar. Maybe it's obsessively working until all hours. But you can also get addicted to your story. So it doesn't matter what your addiction is, because every addiction has one thing in common. All you have to do is look clearly at the places where you lose power in your life, and there's an addiction present. It could be not having money. It could be not having enough time. It could be that feeling of being stuck. Where do you feel powerless? That's a sign of addiction. Insight hash 28, recognize the signs that indicate you might be addicted to your story. Whatever the addiction is, it keeps people in one of those negative emotions that we talked about in this section, such as worry or anger. Here's the thing about addictions, it's a power struggle. You can't be addicted to your story and stand in your personal power at the same time. It's one or the other. So choose. Insight Ash 29, since we will eventually choose to create with love and harmony and joy anyway, why not just give up the addiction and choose to align with the energies of our soul now? And, as we talked about in the first section of this book, not everyone out there is truly on our side, no matter how much they think they are. It's possible that someone is invalidating you right now and maybe they're pulling you away from your soul. Maybe they are sucking the very joy out of you. Maybe they're stealing your exclamation points. Whether it is intentional or not is besides the point. They may be doing it out of their own negative places, or they may not even know they're doing it at all. I'm not trying to place blame on anyone. Sometimes it just is what it is. When you realize this is happening, you have a responsibility to yourself and the planet, because you're stretched away from your soul. You've lost touch with your passions, your values, and most importantly, your purpose. It is your responsibility to change those negatives into positives. Sometimes it means you simply have to change the language in your head. Remember the tip I gave you a while back? To put your hand over your heart to quiet the chatter. This is an excellent exercise to do when you're dealing with your own internal negative thoughts. Close your eyes. Put your hand over your heart. Breathe in compassion. Let that breath go. Breathe in gratitude. Let that breath go. Breathe in clarity. Let that breath go. And you do need to deal with any negative thoughts or feelings. When we hold those emotions in, they fester and create wounds that are difficult to heal. If you're reading this book, you probably already know this. You are probably dealing with the effects of emotional scars that may even run very deep and moving past them is often very difficult. So start small. Take time to just sit quietly with your hand over your heart and focus on breathing in energies such as inspiration, wisdom, or honor for the situation. You'll be amazed at how quickly it subsides. 
imagine life with clarity and creativity running through you. By the way, did you know that clarity dissolves fear? When the negativity is coming from outside of you, then you have to start making some decisions, and this can be hard. When we are being invalidated, it is often by people that we love, admire, or respect in some way, and so their hurtful words and actions have that much more power to cause us pain. But remember that sense of gratitude we talked about? Draw on that for your strength. Be grateful that you can identify what isn't valid in someone else's criticism of you. Hold reverence for them, and know they are on their own journey, and perhaps learning some painful lessons, too. And then from that place of gratitude, you can begin to decide how much of that person you really need in your life. Remember that I told you I recently left a group of people who were stealing my exclamation points? Sometimes we have to do that, and it can be upsetting. Other times, especially if it is family we're talking about here, it may just mean that we need to minimize their effect on us, by focusing on just one positive thing. Or, maybe we need to tell that person what their effect on us is. After all, they may not realize they are doing it. Their actions and words are often built on their own experiences, and if they haven't begun the journey that you are now on, they simply may not realize that they are hurting you. But whatever your course of action, you must act. It is your responsibility to fulfill your purpose, without negativity standing in your way. The farther away you stretch, the farther away from the real you you are then the farther away you are from making a difference on this planet. You're not fulfilling your responsibility to answer your calling. It stretches tighter and tighter, and causes more and more tension. And that's where karma comes in again. As long as we're on the wrong path, as long as the tension is there, karma will continue to send us reminders. All it takes is the courage of our convictions to start following our intuition. But this is where it gets interesting someone else can create a situation, or a crossroads, where you can make a choice to detach from your soul and learn a lesson, maybe the hard, painful way, or where you can make the choice to stay a whole soul, if you will, and use your intuition to avoid that circumstance. In Sightash 30, you can't always control what happens to you. You can't always control the situation but you always have the option to choose the road to your higher soul self. You always have the choice to stay in the energy of intuition, compassion, gratitude, and clarity. You always have the choice to further develop your soul, and stay on track with its purpose for you. You always have the choice to follow your vision and not get distracted with obstacles. Do you see that? Go back to the diagram of the stick figures you drew and see how your own natural positive energy can bring you back to your soul self, where you can feel centered in your own wisdom. In fact, everything we learn in the Unleash the Vision Within Home Study course is designed to heal the splintered you, and bring you back to a soul level, so you can live the life you're meant to live. That's pretty exciting. And if you're excited to get a jump on these idea, and discover the life you're meant to live, then this might be the perfect next step for you, www.remishaws.com slash complimentary discovery session slash. Because the farther away from the centeredness you are, the more you're in confusion or frustration, and you have those question marks floating overhead, then you are in a place of irresponsibility. Now, I don't mean that in a bad way. It just is. I believe there's no accident that we're here on this earth, at this time. And it's our responsibility to find that purpose, and live the life we're meant to live. And until we step up to our greatness, are we really living in that place of responsibility? Evaluate your stick figure, our last exercise so take a look back at your diagram, and honestly assess where you are. Ask yourself if you are 100% aligned with your soul. And if you aren't, ask yourself how close you are, 60% there? 90% there? The first time I did this exercise, and asked myself that question, 
My gut instinct was that I was 87% there. So I asked myself, what would bring me all the way home, why am I not aligned 100%? And the message that whispered in my ear was, because you aren't doing your work in the world yet. Because you aren't inspiring others on a grand scale yet. Because you aren't living your vision. Boy, it was kind of a wake up call. So I want you to make a mark on the line there, wherever you think you fall, and write the number. 50%. 80%. Whatever you think it is. And then write down this question, what would bring me all the way home, all the way to living my soul's purpose. So this was our last lesson, to choose the path that challenges you. When standing at a crossroads, yes, you always want to choose in favor of your passions and values. And it's interesting to note that there's another choice there, too. Within the choice of following your passions and values, you are also faced with the choice to move closer to your soul's purpose, or to instead remain confused and splintered, outside of your vision. Sometimes the path that's the most challenging is the one where there's a life lesson, something your soul wants to learn. But that's often just a test. Have you ever heard the theory that angels are angels because they've graduated, and no longer need to be tested? We get tests all the time. And we always, always have the choice to pull away from our soul, away from our life purpose, and that's where the don'ts, wants, can'ts and all the other doubts live. Or move back toward joy, intuition, inspiration, perception, and clarity. And sometimes that is our greatest challenge, to always keep our eye on our soul's journey into the life we're meant to live. I don't know about you, but I would love to graduate from this physical plane and all these lessons. Three best takeaways you've only just begun your journey toward a more fulfilling life guided by your passions and your values. I wanted to get us started with some things we can immediately do to find our tragically hip and incredibly cool passionate life, so to recap what we've covered so far. We covered how to begin to look at those things that are 50 slash 50 in our life. It's going to take being honest. But this is your truth, and that's one of the first steps in finding our passions and purpose in life, is learning to listen to the truth of who we are. This is the transformation I want to provide with every program, that we find out who we are and what we stand for. And it takes total, sometimes uncomfortable, honesty. But the gift of certainty is an amazing thing. We covered how we have to kick all the Mr. Grumpy butts out of our life so we can get on track. Because to live a purpose-infused life, it should be effortless. When we're headed in the right direction, when we can get it right, the money flows. We talked about how thinking, thinking, thinking can make us crazy, crazy, crazy. But we can close our eyes, and put our hand over our heart and that can very quickly that turn off any obsessive mind chatter. This will help open the path to our hidden inner genius. We talked about how at the end of every transformation are all our exclamation points. That's where we can find our natural positive energy, and dovetail with the energy of the universe. We talked about how what you want in life is already there. It's just waiting for your energy to resonate with it. We talked about how to create your own inner board of directors, and how the energy of these members already exists within you. And how to give each of them a voice, and dialogue with them to help you begin to identify your true life purpose. We talked about how purpose is three parts, your mantra, your natural energy, and your legacy, so you can begin to connect with your greatness, whatever that is, and start living the life you're meant to live. We talked about how any negative can be turned into a positive, and if we can come up with just one positive thing, then we can come up with 5, and 10, and so on. By the time we get to 20 positive things about that one negative, we will have changed our energy, and begun to resonate with what we really want. We talked about the role of karma in our lives, when we're stuck, the situation is asking us to evolve to a higher purpose. And remember, if you're feeling stuck right now, 
you can visit www.remeshorts.com and grab 5 free videos called How to Get Unstuck. And then lastly, as we talked about finding your smart and sexy true life's purpose, we looked at how to take the path that challenges you. Your life's purpose doesn't have to be as grand as removing self-doubt from the planet, or changing prosperity consciousness worldwide. It also doesn't have to be serious. In fact, if your life's purpose hasn't become crystal clear to you yet, then simply ask yourself, what would be the most fun thing I could do with my life? And then simply start doing the things that bring you the most joy and that will lead you effortlessly into your purpose. Your joy will lead you into the divine work that you're meant to do. So we've covered a lot, haven't we? I can already feel the breakthroughs happening. Even if you can't save the world in one swoop, or with one epoch, I wanted to at least get you started on a profound journey. Have you ever heard of the Optimism Advantage? I have just one more thing I'd like you to consider before we wrap up. You already know how much of an optimist I am. I've become a huge fan of Dr. Terry Paulson, the award-winning speaker and author of The Optimist Advantage. By the way, he wrote a really great testimonial for my book. He says, claiming your Optimist Advantage is all about getting out of the review mirror and focus on the front window of choices to invent the future you deserve. Armai's new book does that with an exclamation point. Don't just read this book. Devour it, and share it with others who need to get on with living, instead of tipped owing their way to death. Isn't that tantalizing? Have you ever felt like you're tipped owing your way down the absolute wrong path? I don't know about you, but I know that isn't for me. If you're like me, you want to find that special strength inside, and just wake up to your greatness. Set off the alarm clock, and wake up. Anyway. In Dr. Paulson's book called The Optimist Advantage, he talked about how in a 30-year period, there were over 95,000 articles written on anxiety and depression in medical journals, and only 2,100 articles written on happiness and joy. Isn't that stunning? That tells you something about our world today. If you're the kind of person who wants to use your life to inspire others, then you'll be able to relate to this. This is why optimism is so important to me, and like I mentioned, in all my research, what I've discovered is that if someone isn't living the life they want to live, there's usually somebody currently invalidating them, or they're still haunted by someone in their past who did this, and so there's a bit of stuckness going on, on some level. This is why overcoming invalidation is included in my programs. I don't spend a lot of time on it, but the time I do spend on it, is crucial. If you don't have it in your life, someone you know does. In fact, I was talking to a minister recently. He said, I read your chapter on invalidation three times, and just couldn't put it down. And, I couldn't figure out why I couldn't put it down. Then I got a call from my niece at 10.30 at night. She was leaving her abusive husband. I had no clue. Completely missed it. But I had read this chapter over and over, and felt like at least now I know how to help her. Well, this is why I do what I do. Nothing touches me more than when somebody says, it's like you wrote the book for me. Is it over? As we near the end, I want to mention one more amazing discovery. Someone once told me that the emotions of love and hate are so close to each other, it's nearly impossible to tell them apart unless you actually label them. There's a thread of obsessiveness in the emotions of love and hate. It was suggested to me that I think in terms of admiration and respect, instead of love. But doesn't it just feel better to say, I love you to someone? Doesn't that create a wonderful sense of belonging? So much better than gooing. I admire and respect you while batting my eyelashes. Then I was doing some research and began to think, HMMMM. Admiration and respect are both judgments. And they're judgments based on how someone is, how we think they should be, or what they've accomplished. Then I began to look at the word reverence. It has the flavor of honor in it. So as we wind down, 
I want to leave you with a thought about reverence. If I were to meet someone on my life's journey who is a potential love partner or friend or business partner, and they don't align with my values, I don't have to get involved with them at all. Quite the contrary. And this idea of not even getting involved to start with is new for me, since I'm a let's make it happen. Kind of optimist. I can meet someone and have reverence for them, honor their journey, and then bless them on their way, if their values don't align with mine. Or maybe their values do align with mine, and we start a partnership. That doesn't mean that if, at some point, they do something I'm not in agreement with, I won't be distracted into doubts or worry or anger. I have the choice to acknowledge that we have joined together in a spiritual partnership, for however long it's supposed to last, and I can keep my commitment to support each other in growth. In other words, I can have reverence for them and honor their journey without going into judgment, knowing that they have their own lessons to learn, as I do. Whether we disagree on things or not, as long as our values are aligned, I know everything will be fine. In fact, have you ever thought about this? Any time we have a breakup of any kind, it isn't usually because of the reasons we think it is. It's almost always a misalignment of values. In having reverence for other souls, I stay aligned in the energies of my own soul. I get to choose compassion, appreciation, and wisdom as I continue my life's journey. And in doing so, I maintain the utmost unapologetic reverence for myself. This has been one of my greatest takeaways in all my research. What are your three best takeaways from our journey together? In these five steps, plus the bonus, to finding your passionate life, I want you to take a minute to review your notes and circle the three things that stood out the most for you. What has impacted you? How can you use each to help guide your purpose-infused life? Take a few minutes and journal about each one. The end? Have you ever read a book, and loved it all the way through, but then felt completely disappointed and let down when you got to the end? Or sat through a movie only to leave the theater with a bunch of question marks circling over your head asking, is that it? Grrrr. You know how I feel about those question marks. Well. Here we are at the end, and I realize I've made you a promise. Remember how I mentioned earlier that I wanted to give you some things to start with, and I promised to show you how to take it further before the end? You may be thinking, okay, I have some good ideas, I have some homework I can start on, but I really want to just assimilate what I've learned today. I just want to step back and soak it in. Here's my disclaimer, the epoch has officially ended. You can stop reading now. But what if you aren't ready for it to end? Then I'd be doing you a huge disservice. You may be seeing that there's a huge difference between passions and purpose. What if golf is your passion? Is it also your purpose for being on this planet at this time? See what I mean? Maybe you're thinking, I really enjoy cooking for my family. Maybe that's a passion for you, but is it your calling? Is it your purpose for being here? Is it the difference you're supposed to make for the planet? If you want to take this further, if you want to go deeper into what we've talked about here, go deeper into your passions, and really dig into your purpose and what you're meant to do. Here's how. If it feels right to say yes to the next baby steps, and you've been getting a lot so far, then here's what comes next. If you're close to the internet right now, then jump on over to www.unleashthevisionwithin.com You'll find out more about this program at that website. It's designed to heal the splintered you, and bring you back to a soul level, so you can live the life you're meant to live. If you have those question marks floating overhead, then this is a great next step. I believe there's no accident that we're here on this earth, at this time, with these particular gifts and talents. The collective is enhanced by the accomplishments of the individual. So it's our responsibility to find our purpose, and live the life we're meant to live. I hope you'll join me in this program. Complimentary discovery sessions are now available.
why am I here, and how am I supposed to use my life? It's the most common question I get. If you know you're meant for greater things, but you don't know what they are. Dot. If you're tired of being stuck in this place and don't know how to get out of it. Dot. If you feel successful but it also feels mediocre. Dot. Then you might be ready for a discovery session. Together, we'll get clear about what activities and actions will be most gratifying and purposeful, and how to get sweet satisfaction out of your life and your work. Together, we'll discover the life you're meant to live, and discover the best next steps for you. www.remishorse.com slash complimentary discovery session slash